And can I have a uh, pledge of allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Next is fire evacuation. In case of a fire, you can exit the rear of the chambers, go towards Route 5 a safe distance, or you can exit to my left, your right, of the side of the chambers, go down a flight of stairs and out the rear of the building a safe ditch distance. Um, roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda Gray. Absent. L Virginia Higley. Absent. Mary Scott. Absent. Frank Alimo. Absent. John Piccinella. Here. Vinny Grillo. Absent. Nelson Correa. Here. Corinne Majmudar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay, thank you. I'd like to see Commissioner uh, Correa for the remainder of the Aquifer Protection Meeting. Uh, public participation at this time. If there's anybody who would like to speak to the Commission about any items that are not currently on our agenda, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Anyone? Okay, seeing none. Uh, correspondence, updated lit litigation, litigation. Hi, thank you. So as requested from the last meeting, I have updated legislation verified by laws to back them up. Um, I'm just gonna sum it up real quick um, for time and I'll just highlight on the importance of, some, of a couple of them. So, um, I know a couple of the things that we weren't sure about from the last meeting that I verified was, okay, I'll just read a couple that we were talked about at the last meeting. Um, a facility that is not grandfathered, does not conduct any regulated activities, and wishes to not renew their registration, the property will lose its grandfather status, and the 28 regulated activities will never be allowed to be conducted at that site again. If a facility chooses to keep their registration, this keeps the property grandfathered into the program. If the facility chooses to add a regulated activity, then they must apply for the aquifer protection um, permit. And the permits are good for 10 years, registrations are good for five. All permit applications require public hearings. Registrations do not require public hearings. Um, it should be mentioned to every applicant that when they choose to sell their property, the registration stays with the land, but the applicant must apply for a transfer of aquifer protection registration to transfer to a new ownership. If a parcel that is grandfathered and decides to merge with another parcel that is not grandfathered, the entire parcel then becomes grandfathered in. This situation has to meet the definition of facility and the definition of regulated activity, which if both are met and a registration is present and valid, this allows it to be continued or extended to any contiguous property. This includes merged parcels where one parcel contains the grandfather status and the other parcel does not. Um, let's see. Any affected water company may be heard at the meeting and heard at any hearing according to the state agency regulations and the state statutes under section 22A-354P-D. Um, the other things that we had questions about was, all site inspection photos are sent to Deep's Aquifer Department for comments on site compliance. This ensures less staff error and that the APA program is being implemented correctly. This also advises staff in the agency the next proper steps to be taken by the applicant in order to receive their registration or permit. Demonstrating this to Deep to bring Enfield into compliance and to keep our authority is the significance of this. Um, without this step, state can assume that we are not bringing Enfield back into compliance and they have the full authority to revoke the Enfield APA agency's power, thus fining Enfield and furthermore requiring all payments or registration applications to be paid for by the town. Authority can be reinstated in town appeals and if, and if the town demonstrates proper effort for compliance. 
Applicant sites should be maintained properly to ensure compliance with the aquifer protection program. This includes proper labeling of materials and proper storage and handling of materials according to the hazardous waste regulations and compliance assurance with the materials management plan. No four drains are allowed. Um, any four drains without state permits can result in state fines up to $1,000 a day, and a cease and desist order can be issued according to the state statutes of Section 22A 354S, B, and C. Um, it is also important to note that street vehicle regulation is different and not a part of the APA program. Any burrows outside the buildings must be stored inside the facility or have a secondary confinement to protect from leaks or spills. Um, this is according to the local regulations section, our regulations, section 12A-1A um, through H, and that the materials management plan can also be an optional request by the agency, similar to the stormwater management plan request. However, every facility should have the same type of materials management plan for any materials on site. Correct and accurate labels for barrels come from the Compass Hotline for Hazardous Waste Compliance Assistance Program, and they offer free consulting to anybody. No work is allowed to be conducted outside the facility building. All work must be done inside the facility. This is according to the Connecticut State, um, Connecticut State Agency for Section 22A 354I 5 4A and B, and our local regulations include this as well under Section 12A C. Um, any work outside a facility is a violation of stormwater law. Options for businesses that have small facility buildings and um, are to protect metal during rain events by doing a couple things. They can cover metal with rain protectant tarp or by paving lots, in which case the agency can require an applicant to pave a lot if work is being conducted outside a facility or the agency can require an applicant to have some type of roof structure over the additional area for work. The town will not pay for these, and this is due to the fact that these businesses are in a sensitive area due to the aquifers. If applicant refuses to comply with stormwater Water laws, then DEEP will come onto the property and conduct water and soil testing around the entire site. And if a violation is found, fines will be up to $1,000 a day. DEEP involves all state departments, including the Attorney General's office. Dumpsters must be on top concrete slabs. This is due to the best management practice rule and also for the BMPs for location and maintenance of dumpsters relative to public water supply wells. I've included that sheet in the legislation binder. The last couple of things we weren't sure about were vehicles of any kind are not allowed to be parked on grass or gravel and must be parked on top paved surfaces. So there's no exact law for this. However, this applies to many vehicles being parked on a lot and if these vehicles are being maintenance and also to what type of vehicle as commercial vehicles can leak more petroleum products into the ground. This could also be a condition of approval for registrations and this rule particularly relates for junkyards. Um, the other last thing we were curious about was all lawn mowers, weed whackers, and snow blowers must be stored inside facility buildings. This rule relates for circumstances. Facilities with fabrication or flame process processes do not have to have them stored inside. However, all maintenance of these machines must be done inside a facility. Maintenance cannot be conducted outside. However, it is a best management practice to keep these machines inside, but can be varied for different facilities considering their circumstances. And last thing was metal racks should be stored in areas to be protected from rainwater events and should not be stored on site in grassy areas. So this is a materials management plan and stormwater violation um, as well as an industrial or commercial stormwater violation. The exact law will be verified by Karen Allen who is the director of Connecticut Deep Stormwater Management and I will have a meeting with her sometime within the next month, I'm not sure when. And the last part for that is it also violates local Regulations Section 12A. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, um, moving on to new business ARA 013 51 Enfield Street. Is there anyone here for the applicant? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Hi, Ann. Ann Vassar, um, so address, is that what you want, 51 Enfield Street? Thank you. I'm just representing my mom, Diane. Okay. John Kosavich, 28 Francis Ave. 
Welcome. Thanks. Okay. So, um, quick update. Um, they originally came to us in September, but they did not have the right registration page for page three for their activity. And it turns out that their floor drains um, were not done properly and were illegally installed. So, Deep um, almost ordered a season desist, but didn't because and complied immediately and they sealed their floor drains. So, the next step for these guys, because they want to do car or truck washing on Seward, um, they have to come back for their renewal or registration. And what happens now is they have to select the original activity they were grandfathered in, which was auto repair. They have to be approved for that grandfathered activity. And there's a note on the top saying that this activity is not currently being conducted on site and that auto detailing is. Once they've received their registration, um, the applicant can then apply to the vehicle maintenance waste water discharge program and watch if they get approved from the state this will grant them legal access to their four drains and a proper connection to public sewer to allow for car washing then once they have the state permit they will come back to us to add a new activity which will be car and truck washing um, so the first site inspection was conducted on September 10th. It was found that the floor drains were um, not sealed and that a small bag, of de small bag of desalting ice had to be moved inside. Both of these things have been corrected. Um, now the applicant is here for a renewal of an expired registration. Okay, thank you. Uh, my first question would be, I know the garage. I know it well. Were there floor drains in it when your dad ran it? There was one, yes. And are they the same floor drains we're talking about right no. now? No, no, there's only one floor drain. There's not several. Okay, so it's a different floor drain. Yes. Okay. My question to you is, are they going to have to come back if they decide to put air in a tire? Because car maintenance is repairs, detailing, all of it. Mm -hmm. How are you separating this from doing an oil change? Because that's maintenance on a car too. And a lot of garages will mm -hmm. wash your car when you go in for service. Mm -hmm. So um, because of the grandfathered activity of the original activity, which was auto repair, they will not have to come back for that because that activity is grandfathered into the site. Right, but you're talking about, you know, if they wash the car? Car washing is a different activity. So once they get their state permit, they'll have to come back to add that activity onto the registration. In which case, it will be a permit and it will be good for 10 years. Commissioners, any questions? I apologize to you guys, because I, for one, this is just everybody's getting railroaded it's not right and it's going to come to blow so to keep you moving forward i'm okay with this application now but uh i think you fall under automotive repair nothing should change you shouldn't have to come back 50 times it's ridiculous the floor drains yes they were put in illegally i understand that the town did what they had to do um, hopefully you can correct it come back and get approved floor drains Absolutely. so yep we'll work on it how would you like to proceed? Or do you have any questions, Rich? I, I, again, I, I reflect Commissioner Nelson's um, philosophy in terms of, you know, it, it's, it's, it's trying to impose significant hardships on businesses that are trying to conduct business as they've done over a period of time. And to pass a law without having retribution to the entities that are affected seems to me to be totally you know not acceptable in terms of if you're going to mandate that something has to happen and if there's a cost associated with that mandate then potentially you know somebody has to subsidize that particular cost associated with something that somebody decides that they need to do rather than say the burden is is upon the owner who's always owned a building or who has you know acquired a building that was utilized for a certain function for a significant period of time and just because somebody snaps their fingers or passes a law which is just about the same thing that all of a sudden the burden of proof always falls on the original owner and and that to me seems to be an undue burden on the inhabitants of the town that we have and it, it it's starting to 
indicate that you know we are are not we don't care about who's doing business or how they do business but but you know we 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 do everything with blinders and i think that's wrong i think that we need to somehow either get the you know deep to to acknowledge the fact that if there's a cost associated with something somebody should be sharing that cost or absorbing that cost so that we don't necessarily just put the burden on the you know i guess the the, the owners of the business mm -hmm. so in terms of i think that we need to recognize the fact that you know what we're saying and and you know this, this is going to go throughout the entire hearing that we're going to have or, or our, our meeting today but you know we we should recognize the fact that you know that there's a lot of things that are not allowed anymore yeah. that should have been allowed by right and 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 i i agree that that's not a way of doing you know or treating businesses or mm -hmm. people in general so that's all I have to say. Commissioner Alimo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So this process that these businesses in Enfield are going to start going through with something new to everybody, what's the cost for them? I mean, is, I don't see any professional. looks like they didn't have to get any professional help yet. But this is going to be a, a wicked burden on small businesses um, to hire professional engineers. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Karen. But... Um, I mean, this is a huge cost, and it's like, do they, do people know about this? So I mean, it's like it's yeah. something new, and it's not new. The program originally came into Enfield before 2010. Enfield was granted a chance about 180 days for all businesses on top of the aquifer to come and get their registration. The initial purpose of this was to start the grandfathered status so that they can continue to operate their business and that it basically tells uh, us that they're in compliance with all the environmental laws of Connecticut. Um, the other thing is, is that um, for some reason, I wasn't here back during the days, the program failed to launch. It didn't, a couple businesses came in, but not all businesses. And if there's a business out there that was never properly notified of the aquifer protection program, DEEP has full authority to find them. And this is, see, this is kind of, I agree with everything you say, and I totally support local businesses as well. However, um, it's a state-mandated program, and there's nothing that I can really do about that situation. Um, this is our third or fourth chance to finally get this program up and running, and me being in touch with the state keeps the state out of Enfield, and I think that would be the best bet is to keep DEEP out of Enfield, because once DEEP comes in, they bring everybody, even the Attorney General office and they can revoke our authority at the snap of their fingers and we can appeal that if that ever did happen but I'm trying my best to keep that from happening and I have been working with Annie over there for a couple of months now and I've been helping her the best to my ability and she's halfway there so I want to continue to push her for success all set um yeah I, i'm all set thank you this is they're they've been working on this for two three months and they're halfway there they're almost to wash there. cars <laughs> i know you're doing your job oh. <laughs> and you keep saying you know we want to keep deep out of enfield well deep wants us to be their bad guys and i don't think this commission is going to be their bad guys so if they want to oh. come to enfield and go toe to toe with us because if we don't stick up for our businesses mm -hmm. we have no businesses to defend Yes. And this isn't right. So if Deep wants to come and they want to challenge us, like paving parking lots, that's absurd. Would you rather have an oil spill on a property or somebody wash their car? They're doing a much lesser use by washing cars. It should fall under their grandfather. And them having to change use and this and that, like I said, I apologize to them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the people, yes, I understand a lot of the things, you know, keeping chemicals inside and stuff like that. But the water company having control over your personal property, so that's that, not right. I verified that. They do need permission from the owner. They cannot just walk onto your property. However, last time we talked about the water beneath our property is my water. The air above my property is my air. 
That isn't necessarily the case because it falls under the Connecticut Public Trust, and that's a federal and state mandated program there. And if a property owner were to deny the water company an inspection, they have the full authority to fly a drone over your property. And I did verify that with my meeting this morning with DEEP. With DEEP? Yes. But, you, but you're saying DEEP has the authority the to take my personal property rights from me because in Connecticut, it's a fact. We own all our mineral rights, which means we own the water below our property. So if they're going to take that from us, they need to compensate us. If they're going to prevent use of a property, do you know what that does to the value oh, yes, of their of property? Mm -hmm. Well, where are they getting compensated? So... I totally agree, and there's not much that the town can do about that. Right. Um, and if that was the case, the town would be responsible probably for that compensation. Town didn't make the law. Exactly. However, the duties of the agency is to protect the environment and the public drinking water. You don't want to be drinking petroleum-contaminated water coming out of your sink. So I agree. But this is just law. It's the way it is. And it's been like this since the program was first implemented. It, the program was brought up in 1976. Let me just. I don't need the water company. But they put a grid around us or they put handcuffs on us so we can't drill our own well. I'd rather have my own well anyways. You want to talk about somebody doing a terrorist attack? Just contaminate the groundwater. You take out a whole town. But if we all own a well, that can't happen. <laughs> I agree. You laugh, but it's, it's sorry, a fact. You say and it I funny. own my water. <laughs> mm -hmm. And for the health department to tell me I can't get a permit to take the water that I own below me, well, that's a monopoly on the water. And isn't that illegal in the United so, States of America? I'm not exactly sure how that works with public um, wells. I mean, private wells. I'm sorry, private wells. However, I do know that it is part of the Connecticut Public Trust Fund. That is something I don't 100% understand just yet. Um, but I can try to figure out more about that process. I'm just not sure how it works with private wells just yet. I haven't come across that. Go ahead, Rich. Because question, in terms of, you know, everybody keeps saying that we're trying to protect the water. Mm -hmm. In terms of if this business was doing business like this for 50 years and nothing has happened to the water, why is it all of a sudden that, you know, Everybody's paranoid that that you know it, it's going to happen. You know the thing is, you know th there's always going to be the instance where something happens that's uh, you know unpredictable, un unavoidable. But but the thing is, you know, for the most part, you know there could be 150, 200, or 300 businesses that are have been operating for oh, ever, yeah. forever. You know, and and all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, you can't do that because you're going to pollute the water. Well, they would have polluted the water already if, if they were going to be polluting water in, in that you know method that that you we're describing. So all of a sudden, you know, I think that you know either somebody doesn't understand the logic of what they're trying to achieve, and and they're just starting to push buttons and you know passing laws yes. rather than looking at the probability of something in terms of something's always hap probable i be could be walking across the street and hit by a, a tr truck but you know i've been al alive for many many years and you know what i haven't so mm -hmm. so does that mean that i'm never going to cross the street again because it could possibly happen okay. but but you know and and that that's what we're looking at they're saying well it could happen it could happen this could happen that so. could happen but in reality if we look at the history of it and the fact that it it hasn't happened and it has performed in an acceptable manner for a significant period of time and now all of a sudden you're going to start lynching people and and, and finding them and taking away their businesses because something okay. might happen okay. versus okay. something that you, you know is just a theory versus you know reality you know how many times has this happened in in, in fields in the past 50 years you, you know, let's let's look at it. You know, and and let's let's look at the probability of it before we start jumping off the cliff. And and, and I think that you know that's what I think that we need to do is, is rather than look at the theory of it, uh, this could happen in terms of the, let's look at the reality of it. So, um, I understand everything. Um, it could go two ways, though, if you really think about it. Um, stormwater drains—they're discharging directly into the environment you would have no 
true way of knowing unless you went out there and looked at the discharge of what exactly is coming out of these storm drains. Um, so for example, Annie, I'm just going to use an example. Um, um, when they put their floor drains in, they didn't have an oil water separator. All that oil from washing cars was going into the drains, which was going into public um, sewer. Public sewer had no knowledge of this. Um, luckily, our sewer system's good enough that we don't drink any of the contaminants, and so that's the good part about it. However, with, with catch basins and stormwater, um, it could be discharging directly into the environment, and you, we would probably never know unless it was a big enough impact where we physically see it, taste it, feel it, or smell it, or it could be a little contamination where we might not even see it. But again, that's that's theory in terms of, you know, you're saying it could happen. It could happen. And, and that's what I'm saying is, is anything could happen. And, and, you know, for the most part, you know, what what evidence do we have that it's it is it's hap it is happening that it's it, happened it, to other places not just not just ours it could happen anywhere other towns have had their aquifers polluted and the remediation process to clean those aquifers cost like thousands and thousands of dollars but what do you think it's costing the home i business? don't know but as our duty as the agency is to protect the groundwater there's got to be a balance Yes, exactly. And they're doing, um, they did what they had to do, and we're trying our best to help them. Um, this isn't anything from the town. This is all state. So. Right. And we want the town to know we got their back. Yeah, they know. And if the deep comes to us and challenges us, then I'm ready for that fight because we can't do this to all our businesses you can't. Yes, I agree. I apologize again to you because you walked into a uh, S storm big time and it started before you guys I've been watching you get put off and put off and put off I think it's ridiculous I think the Commission has the same sentiments you do have to go through the processes right now but this is going to continue on hopefully if you ever have to renew the registration you don't have to go through this again they won't so just understand this isn't you particular there's other people out here who we've been dealing with before this so um, any issues you do have feel free to request an informal meeting with us and come to us so if you're getting roadblocks somewhere along the way um, if she says that deep is requiring and you disagree we want to hear from you okay because we want to know what challenges we're facing and we won't know unless you bring them to us all righty anybody else I just wanted to follow up on what what rich said um, so I've been around here a good many years, not as many as him, but, you know, and I'm retired from the emergency services here in town, and I don't ever remember somebody opening up their water and having oil come out. Well, it probably you know, didn't been, happen in Enfield, well, luckily. It's never happened. I mean, yeah, it's that's like, good. Where does this stop? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I agree with everybody, my colleagues here. This, I don't like this at all. I don't like it at all. Thank you. I agree. Okay. Commission, how would you like to proceed? I'd like to know where all the oil went from Deep Water Horizon, that oil rig that <laughs> dumped all those millions of gallons of oil that just disappeared. Right. Mr. Chair, for looking for a motion, I'll make a motion to approve ARA 1351 Enfield Street Aquifer Registration Application for Touch of Class Auto Detailing Car Wash Facility over an A43 Aquifer with Diane Pagnoni, Pag, Paganon. <laughs> Pagano. Pagano owner, Rose, Jose Rosado, operator, map 35, lot two, two, 206, BL zone for the res, registered activity of D. Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. You're welcome. Good night. Have a good night. Good night. Moving on, ARA 011. Eight Dust House Road. Informal application. Review for aquifer registration for Daigle's Welding. Welcome. Up, Scott Daigle, owner of Daigle's Welding, Eight Dust House Road. Eight Dust House Road. Okay, what do we got? 
Uh, welcome, Scott. Um, he is here for um, his official renewal of an expired registration. On uh, September 23rd, the applicant came in before the agency for an informal discussion. This site is home to Scott Daigle's welding facility. The registration has expired. Um, they have indicated the following activities as stated on um, the new page three in your packets, just the activity of T, production or fabrication of metal products. The site is on top of two aquifers. The first inspection was done in July. I said some things at the last meeting that I never had a time, never had a chance to verify. I verified them now, and I'd like to go over them again. Um, no hazardous materials exist on site. Materials were not properly stored in the facility. The applicant has addressed this, and he has ordered a cabinet, which will be stored outside. Which will be stored outside, and this will help to avoid possible fire from metal work done inside. He will particularly be putting gasoline in there. Right, Scott. Right. Okay, good. And then um, labels were run out on barrels. He has replaced these labels. Um, steel dumpsters in the back of the property had to have secondary confinement. He has applied for a zoning permit for a concrete slab. The concrete slab was done, and the dumpster now has secondary confinement. Um, work must be done within the facility. So this was um, verified by the state, um, the Connecticut Agency for State. No, oh, wait, hang on. What's it called? Uh. It's called the Regulations of Connecticut State Agencies under Section 22A-354I-4-5A and B. So I understand with the applicant that this isn't the case because the metal projects are too big. However, there is a way that we can work it out where he can still continue to do work outside the facility. And there's a couple options we can go to help him with this. We'll discuss that in a minute, a moment. Um, lawnmowers are outside. This is okay. He can have the lawnmowers and equipment outside. If he just does any maintenance, they just have to be maintenance inside. Then he can move them back out. Um, he has supplied a BMP and an MMP report. It includes a material inventory list of materials as well. Um, it is recommended that this application be approved for the conditions of sending pictures of confirmation of the concrete slab, which he did, and the cabinet, which he will. And also, um, just for note, a second site inspection was never conducted as it did not seem necessary after receiving the list of material inventory from the applicant. So going back to the work done within the, I'm fine, to be done within the work, work being done inside the facility, there's a couple of things that can be done to address this. Either he could um, get some type of roof structure to cover the gravel lot so he doesn't have to pave it, or he could do some type of shed in the back, which I know might not work out considering his business, um, or he could do an addition to the current structure, that was another option, or if he rather not do any of this, um, he would have to either pave the lot if he doesn't want to do the roof structure, or just cover the metal during rain events with a tarp. Not put the tarp on, like underneath the metal, but put the tarp over the metal to protect it from, from rust going into the groundwater. Um, those were the only ideas I could come up with to help him. So if he covers the material, say he's building or repairing a trailer, mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, if it's going to rain, he covers it, he's good to go. So that was my understanding of it, and that's what I would like to assume moving forward. However, when I had that meeting this morning to verify that legislation, it was made clear to me that all work, though it has to be done inside the facility, it's mostly because of a roof structure. So it needs some kind of roof structure to protect it from any type of stormwater um, contamination. That is also stated in our regulations under Section 12. Um, and it's also in the Connecticut State Regulations of Connecticut State Agencies. And I don't know if it's in the state statutes, but it's in the state agencies. So where does the grandfather fall in on here? They've on the activity. In that driveway for... I can't speak on the history of it. I was not here. We but were. I wasn't. No, and we this were. Is I'm the, telling you. I understand. So how is he grandfathered when he's got a trailer that's longer than his building and the building's close enough to the road now where mm -hmm. it doesn't meet the requirements to do an addition off the front of the building. Where's his grandfather? I'm not entirely sure, but what okay. I do know is that there's so a law requiring need, roof I, structures. We need to go back, excuse me, we need to go back to the TARP scenario, okay? Mm -hmm. And I think enforcement here is part of the problem. We keep digging and digging and digging with DEEP, 
They're going to always give you answers you don't like. I like your original answer. Mm -hmm. We cover it at the end of the day. If he's caught not covering the material at the end of the day on a rain day or whatever, then you have a leg to stand on. He agrees to it. We sign off on it. The man goes back to work. So the only problem with that, and I'm not disagreeing with you, Mr. Chair, the only problem with that would be if the state found out that the local agency approved that, I'm not sure what the fines would be involved with that. I don't, I do not. me. Well, the issue is they can't do that. The state would probably not challenge the chair. They would be going after the applicant because that's his property. And now I, I understand about the whole, the grandfather status, where does that come in? I am not 100% sure on that. What I do know is that um, the grandfather status applies to his activity. And if he has been doing this for the past 40 years, it was never brought to the intention of any officer to issue any type of aquifer violation. There was no aqua for 40 years ago. There was no enforcement. 1976 was when the Aquifer Protection uh, Program aquifer came, came in 2006 in Enfield. Drop, and we applied for it. And we got granted. They were fine with it then. Mm-hmm. We cannot put a rock crusher inside our shop. I cannot cover it at night. And it does not leak oil. It does not do nothing. We're cutting and fixing cracks in the beams. So how does that affect the aquifer? And here's my other thing. I'm, I'm getting pissed now. We're talking about the, the town of Enfield, right? You're talking about Plaza Construction, good customer of mine. Town Anfield put a dump on there, and they're not even worried about that? So let's get off Daigle's ass, because it's getting to be it's getting to be ridiculous. Cover steel. Corinne deals with structurals all day. The steel is not affecting the aquifer one bit. Mm-hmm. And I'm getting pissed. I'm about to get an attorney involved, and I'd rather spend my money on an attorney just to be right. This is getting ridiculous here. These people that are all here putting money out, I'm not paving a lot. I already got a price for Glosso, $81,000. I'm not paving it. Sorry, I'm I'm, I'm getting pissed again because there's no freaking common sense here. You know, what are you next, gotta go after Bosco's because their low beds are outside? No, that's not fair. I have a fair response to that. because Enfield never implemented the program correctly, lots of businesses like Mr. Daigle, they were never truly brought into compliance the way they originally should have been. And he mentions other facilities. These facilities will be coming into us and they'll be doing the same exact thing. They have to be brought into compliance. Um, how, how are you going to cr- cr- make this Plaza stop. right? It's going to stop. Town made that dump. Excuse me. We're not talking about Plaza. Well, I'm just We're, saying, I, you Scott, can't, I can't be Scott, compliant. Scott, I'm asking you to relax. Oh. All right? You see where the we commission's going, and we sense your frustration, but mm-hmm. getting out of control is not going to help anybody. Commissioner Suzak. Because I have a question. In terms of everybody saying that, you know, particles that fall, you know, again, inert particles, you know, rust is rust. It's, it's not going to dissolve. It's, it's kind of a, a hard particle. In terms of, you know, when, when we look at, you know, the... The, the collection of, of impurities in groundwater, normally we, we, we run something through a swale or so, mm-hmm. through soil, and that soil more or less absorbs, you know, the, the, the I guess, the, the particle that you're trying to achieve. So what's the difference here in terms of, you know, if I have a little particle and it's got to get through all, you know, through 150 feet of soil, first it bounces off of one thing and it stays there for, you know, two or three years, then it bounces off another one. So it'll take it, you know, three million years to get through 150 feet of soil. And and, and how the heck is is that going to contaminate, you know, just looking at it, you know, practically, you know, it's it's not like it's going to dissolve and all of a sudden it's just running with the water. It gets carried by the water. Mm So, so, you know, I I don't understand the the practicality of some of this stuff. And, And just because somebody says, you know, oh, Oh, I think it's going to be. I think it's detrimental. I think it's a bad idea. It doesn't mean it, it really is. Mm-hmm. And, and and all of a sudden we're persecuting this guy because of something that somebody doesn't understand how things work. I you know, they they're, they're, they might be you know book smart, but they don't have any practical sense or, or bone in their body to try to figure out how it's really going to affect you know these people. And it is affecting these people. It's, mm-hmm. it's not you know like. Just because you have an idea doesn't make it real. 
and 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 we're and and what what we really need to do is just the reality of it, not necessarily the theoretical you know aspect of it. So, so. I can 100% agree. If you, I agree with all of you, and like you, I I feel for the local businesses. Um, this program is really hard to implement into a town, especially when it was never implemented correctly. However, with in regards to the soil and the way contamination from rust works, I that is out of my expertise. I'm not 100% sure how the carrying of contaminants work with the aquifer exactly. All I know is that over time, contaminants build and they do leak eventually. Again, I'm not sure how that process works, and I will learn eventually. I'm not a college-educated person, but let me ask you this. Where does steel and iron come from? Earth metals. Earth metals. Yeah. Hazardville water, well, hardest rust. water there is. The mineral count is, you, you get it against your house, a white house, it leaves rust spots on it. Yeah. That's how bad it is. I, so I, cereal, I agree. Cereal has iron in it. And I've seen where they test the iron and minerals in cereal, and it's literally metal in cereal that people don't realize they're eating, but that is the iron they're talking about. That's in your cereal. Our bodies need it. Rust and I'm sorry, Rich, rust does dissolve to nothing, and it becomes back down to um, a microscopic level. And that's how you it know, gets it into the groundwater. It doesn't stay big chips. It what? That's how it gets into the groundwater. But it's in the groundwater. It's already there. Look at Hazardville so, Water. You go test Hazardville Water for their um, hard waterness, and, and tell me it's not there. So I guess it would depend on where that contamination is coming from and if it's a business on top of the aquifers. It could have been a business that we never had them register before, and that's what we're trying to fix. I'm not a soil scientist. I'm not in the expertise of how contaminants work with Jen, soil. it's in the soils. It's in the soil. If I put a point well in my house in southern Enfield and I pump groundwater, Okay, that's 10, 19 feet down to water my lawn so I don't have to pay the crooks at the Hazardville Water Company. Okay, that water comes directly out of the ground with a rust color in it because there's high mineral contents in the soil around here. It's not from Daigle's welding, it's from the world. Mm -hmm. So trying to enforce a change like global, global warming against one person to make a change is ridiculous. So... I'm okay with the tarp. If they come after him and he's okay with it, okay. he says, look, the aquifer protection signed off That's on fair. it. I'm speaking for myself. I don't know how the rest of the commission feels, but he's not alone. Mm -hmm. And if we don't start standing up for our businesses, he's the first of many because you know what? That car wash that just left, their parking lot's not paved either. It was dug up when they removed the tanks to prevent the soils from getting contaminated. So isn't that more beneficial than having a paved parking lot, getting rid of those tanks? Absolutely. So, so well, the paved I, parking lot, they don't have commercial vehicles. They're parking and it's only a couple of cars. They, you it's don't know like that. 20, they could have a commercial fleet. It could be a violation if they do. So ho we're hoping and we're assuming that they're not. Okay, we're assuming. Well, we're assuming he fixes equipment inside most of the time. Okay? Fair, yes. So if we're going to assume, let's assume. Okay. Well, first of all, we're not mechanically working on anything. I, I understand. Okay. Second of all, I cannot tarp a rock crusher when it's in my yard. I understand. Well, I'm, I, I'm mostly, they're mostly concerned just about the metal racks hanging over the them, grass. And they've been there for some time. And from my understanding, it could be different, Scott. But from my understanding from the site inspection was that these metal racks have been here. And they've been here forever. And I understand that. But it's, it's not like a giant metal rack. Um, I believe it would be reasonable to put a tarp over it for rain unless you need it. I understand that. that. I'm not worried about but that. But okay. the front projects, I agree. The trailer size. And the back projects. I agree. And the back projects, I totally agree. Um, I'm just a messenger with the law. I, I, Jen, um, Jen. Georgie. <laughs> I, I, I think we agree with you. Yeah. And you're going to be the middle person. And you're in a very That's tough fine. situation because you see how. There's, there's a happy medium here. He's willing to cover the metal racks. We make that a condition of your approval. Yeah, that's you put a cover over it. Obviously, the I'll racks get some are tin and put it over, make a roof over right. it. I, I agree. So the We're only time. the only yeah. thing I'm not 100% sure of was with the law that stated all work has to have some type of roof structure. 
I just learned about that this morning at 11 o'clock. Oh, nice. I am it's not sure. It's impossible. It's impossible. So you're going to tell everybody on Dust House Road that now I got to cover equipment, but they can run equipment and dig holes all over their property. They will be coming into us, too. I, I'm, I'm just saying in general. I'm just saying even Connecticut Water. Mm -hmm. Then I don't want to hear any of that crap. That's not fair. Connecticut Water does whatever they want. But so, Daigle's got to comply. So I suggest going along with your suggestion with the tarp. Um, I do not know how it would work if or when. You in compliance. Yes. Yep. And if the bridge collapses, we'll fix Com it at yeah, that point. We'll cross that path when it comes. Yeah. Now here, first of all, the cabinet, they want me to put the gas can in. Insurance company don't want to hear about that in the shop. Mm -hmm. So because they're worried that fumes are going to come out of the cabinet, we're going to have an explosion, and the fire department's gone. Well, that's why I think the now, lawnmowers and stuff in your situation, yes. it's even so in the they, regulations, yes. yep. can remain they outside. They don't even want it behind the shop. They want it upstairs in the, in the storage area, and that's where they want it because they're saying if a fire happens, 90% of the time it's on the floor, you know, and, the, and long as the fire marshal in Hasville knows about it, you know, that they know where our stuff is, and that's where they want it, but mm -hmm. they do not it's want that It's a fireproof can, isn't it? Huh? It's a fireproof can, isn't no. it? Oh, well, plastic can. It shouldn't be fireproof. What, a steel can? Yeah, I'll with I'll the spring-loaded lid. I don't care, I'll get one. Yeah, I'm surprised. I'm worried about that. Anyways, you guys all set? Can I get, ask you something? With, with this stuff that's going on, so I'm a little embarrassed by all this because, you know, Enfield had like a reputation that we weren't business friendly. And this committee has worked very, very hard to get business. Right now, we have more buildings going up in town than I can remember. Yep. And and now we're now we're doing this. This is so, like so, so. So you know where his building. So you're, everything's speculates, right? Everything could happen. We're thinking about it might happen. So you know where his building is, right? Yes. Right, but so so you know what was there before? I wasn't here. A gun, a, a, a gunpowder man, powder hollow. Oh, right. Does that mean his building might explode someday because they used to make dynamite? I, I don't know. This is, so, this is like crazy. This is crazy. So this I, has got to stop. I know what you're saying. This has and to stop. To come back to that, with the site inspection reports, we're not telling these businesses they can't operate. We're not closing them down. We're assisting them with the current site inspection pictures that we get just to make sure that they currently don't have anything threatening the aquifer. After what everybody's been through the last couple of years, to go out and start doing this now to people in this town, I mean, I, I don't understand it. This is it's not, supposed it's to be not, done in 2008. No, but I mean, look at what the country, look at what the community has gone through. As a community, we have, we've gone through something none of us in this room have ever seen. And now we're starting this. I just don't like it. I, I guess I'm sorry, Mr. Chairman. I, I just we're late for PNC. I'll accept a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve ARA 11 11, 8 Dust House Road, aquifer application for the renewal of registration of Daigle's welding over an A45 and A80 aquifers. Scott Daigle, owner, applicant, map 83, lot 4, I1 zone, registered activity T. Second. With one condition. With the, the condition that he covers the metal storage racks outside. Metal storage racks get covered right. on the outside. Not a good problem. with that, Georgina. And a picture of the cabinet when it comes in. I, I can't have it. The insurance company won't let me. Oh, they won't at all. No, he just mentioned a fireproof. Oh, okay. Fireproof insurance company can. worried about fumes. Okay, then just send a picture of the fireproof can. Okay. All right. Good. I second it with the amendment. Motion's made and seconded. Roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Four. Let me see who's here. <laughs> Frank Alimo. Four. John Petronella. Four. Corinne Majmajar four. and Richard Suzak is four. Nelson, did you say Nelson? Oh, I'm sorry, Nelson Korea. Four. <laughs> okay, all in favor, none against. So it's unanimous. We're good. You ever get any slack, you just say, Give me the a aquifer call. protection approved it unanimous with a condition. Yep. And so send me something in an email. Um, I'll call you. Okay. I'll call you. All right, thank you guys. And then call sorry me if you hear anything. Thank you, and I appreciate you doing the things you had to do understand she's doing her job i mean we back her up too so nobody likes it all right moving on ara 012-100 bright meadow boulevard welcome gentlemen how you doing 
What do we okay. got? So this is Mass Mutual. Um, last meeting, they requested to be tabled to finish some extra research on their BMPs and their MMPs, and they hired an environmental analyst, scientist, consultant. consultant, to finish with the work to make sure that they're doing everything with compliance to the laws. So. Um, here we have the environmental consultant David Prasard of Atlas Technical Consultants and Todd Lamont from Mass Mutual. A second site inspection was conducted with Mr. Brassard to meet with the to go over the campus. Please see site inspection report two. Um, there have been no records of past spills or contamination on the site. Mass Mutual is currently selling, and they have decided to keep the property grandfathered since it adds value to the property. The site is on top of the A43 aquifer. Um, Activities for this application include the same activity as last time, which is activity K, generation of electrical power by means of fossil fuels because they have power, um, they have generators on site. Um, it should be noted that these generators are used for emergency purposes only and may be removed from the campus entirely in the future if need be. These generators are not used to power other areas or properties. The applicant has supplied a new MMP report, including a BMP details and material inventory. It is recommended that this application be approved since all materials have been received and the application has been complete and no violations exist on site. Okay, thank you. Can you gentlemen state your name and address for the record, please? Yeah, David Paul Brazard, um, East Granby, Connecticut, 66 Old County Road. Thank you. Todd, <coughs> Todd Lamont, 5 Gary Road, Enfield, Connecticut. Okay, any questions from the commission? Seeing none, Mr. Mr. Oh, Chair, I, I just want to commend you on you know doing due diligence and and, and you know I look at this report and, and to me it seems that you know the average citizen would would have an undue burden to to actually create these kind of reports that that, that are the kind of detail that you have done and 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 we recognize that Mass Mutual is is a a partner or was a partner or has been a good past partner in the town of Enfield and and that you know you you you, you do play by the rules and you understand what what the rules are but you have a little deeper pockets than the ordinary citizen has and and we commend you on the fact that you you recognize your due diligence as a corporation versus as individual you know people would have to pay it out of their own you know pocket so I, I just want to say that you, you've done a very good job but I think that what we need to do is is streamline this process so that you know people don't necessarily have to be spending a, a significant amount of costs out of their own pockets to create these kind of reports but you you have done an ex exceptional job let me put it that way and I think you guys did the right move keeping the grandfathered in because as you've heard earlier who knows where they're going with this and I don't know how much grandfather even holds anymore if you listen to some of the stuff. So I hope you guys come back to town, to be honest with you. It'd be nice to see Mash Mutual uh, become a partner again. Um, great camp is beautiful. You've always kept it up, and it was sad to see you guys go. So and Phil wants you back. Yeah. We're trying. Better you know. live a mile from there. Yeah. yeah. Well, there you go. Convince them to come back. <laughs> All right, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to approve ARA 12 100 Bright Meadow Boulevard Aquifer reg Registration Applicant for Mass Mutual Campus over A45 Aquifer. Todd Lamont, Applicant, Mass Mutual Life Incorporated Owner, Map 35, Lot 220, BR Zone. And they're compliant with um, activity, I'm not sure. Um. Which, it's activity K. Okay. Activity K. Motion seconded. Motions made and seconded by Commissioner Petronella. Uh, roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Four. I'll, I'll skip to Nelson Correa. Four. John Petronella. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. Corinne Mudgmadar. And Richard Suzak is four. All in favor, none against. Congratulations. Find us a nice big business, a lot of employees. Yeah. We'll do our best. There you go. Thanks, guys. Have a good night. ARA 01498 North Maple Street Aquifer Registration for Leland Hawthorne and Son Incorporated. So the, the applicants could not make it tonight. They had a family obligation. I will be representing them tonight to the best of my ability. 
Um, this is a renewal of an expired aquifer application for Leon Hawthorne Trucking Company located at 98 North Maple Street in Enfield. Their registered activities are B, oil or petroleum dispensing for the purpose of retail wholesale fleet use, D, repair of or maintenance of vehicles or internal combustion engines of vehicles. Um, they originally selected G, however, that was a mistake. They do not have car washing. Um, a site inspection was conducted on October 5th, 2021. At the site inspection, the following information was observed. Empty containers stored in corner are used for the drain for draining radiators. These are disposed of at the Somers dump. Rags are disposed of in plastic bags and they're used for spills and cleanup. Waste oil is stored in barrels and is used for the waste oil furnace. Barrels, if empty and not needed on site, are crushed down to scrap and sold off. No underground storage tank exists on site. See soil report from 2018 when they had the storage tank removed. The hole in the wall on the site inspection picture is to protect the wall from erosion from water runoff. The blue barrel outside is full of, is full of absorbent socks for outside oil spills. Originally, this barrel was not labeled. They later submitted a picture via email showing the barrel having a new label on it. Um, and they have moved it inside. The applicant had, they have floor drains there. The floor drains are so packed with debris, they no longer work anyways. The applicant will have no, stated that he does not have a problem sealing these. Um, the black barrel sitting outside with the, with the leaks, they need a secondary confinement or they had to be moved inside. Um, an email was sent showing the black barrels had been moved inside. These originally had a stormwater violation because they were leaking directly into a stormwater discharge. Um, any and all dumpsters or trash bins must have some type of secondary confinement to protect from leak gate. Um, the applicant did submit a small MMP and BMP plan to the planning department and did correct any possible violations from the site inspection. The next step should be to ver oh, they already did that, never mind. Um, the next steps would be to seal the floor drains entirely before approving the application. Um, and it's recommended that the application be tabled or approved depending on your opinion. I'm okay approving with the condition that the floor drains either be certified uh, to be working order through a oil separator or sealed. They would have to get a state permit for any floor drains. And that might be a long process. And the applicant, I did tell him this, and he told me that he doesn't really use the floor drains for anything anyways, because they're so, they're really gunked up. If you look at the site inspection pictures, and he did tell me that he wouldn't have a problem sealing them. All right, so the condition would be seal the floor drains, providing the owner is in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. If he's not, then we can. That's why I recommended tabling it if you wanted him to come in himself. Because uh, we don't need him. No table it. I mean, huh? I don't want to table it. You guys, questions, anything? All right. Nope. I'll entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve ARA 1498 North Maple Aquifer Registration Application for Leland Holland, Hawthorne and Sons of Delaware Trucking Company over the A80, A50, and A45 aquifers. Lee Hawthorne, owner applicant, MAP 82, lot 64, R33 zone for the activity in... Activity B and, and D. D. B and D, and with the condition that the floor drains be sealed. Second. Motion is made and seconded by Commissioner Alimo. Roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Four. Frank Alimo. Four. Nelson Correa. Four. John Piccinella. Four. Richard Suzak is four. All in favor, none against. Uh, moving on, new applications to be received, ARA 014, which we just moved yep. on. Yep. And that is it. All set. Okay. Yep. Motion for adjournment. So moved, Mr. Chair. Motion is made. Second. So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor of adjournment? I Aye. oppose abstentions. Aquifer protection is adjourned. Thank you. At 
I'd like to call the Anfield Planning and Zoning Commission regular meeting to order for Thursday, October 28th. Um, can we stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. While we're still standing, if we could just take a moment of silence for the old chairman, uh, Charles Dern, who did pass away. I respected the man very much. He taught me a lot and I would not be chair if I didn't have his support and he gave it to me and may he rest in peace. Thank you everyone. Fire evacuation. In case of a fire, you can exit the rear of the chambers, go a safe distance away from the building towards Route 5, but not into Route 5. Or you can exit my left, your right of the council chambers, go down a flight of stairs and out the rear of the building towards the playground. Thank you. Roll call, please. Ken Nelson. Here. Linda DeGray. Absent. Virginia Higley. Absent. Mary Scott. Absent. Frank Alimo. Here. John Piccinella. Here. Vinny Grillo. Here. Nilsson Correa. Here. Corinne Mudgmadar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay. At this time, I would like to see Commissioner Correa for the remainder of the meeting for the absent Commissioner Mary Scott. Uh, approval of minutes, October 14th, 2021's regular meeting. So moved. Any comments, questions, or corrections? Seeing Second. none, Oop. motions made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstention? Town attorney's report? Everyone get one? Any questions for the town attorney? Was there a report in the packet? Was there a town attorney report in the packet? No. No, I didn't see it. I don't know one. Someone that stated this. I got one. I, I keep it all at once. All right. Seeing no town attorney report at this point, we'll move on. Zoning enforcement report. That we have right here. That's this thing. Yeah. Everybody's got it. Yeah. Any comments, questions for the ZEO? Okay. Seeing none, moving on. Uh, uh, before we do public participation at this time, the commission would like to take a five-minute recess. Can I get a motion? So move. Motion's made. Is there a second? Second. Motion's made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, thank you.
this time I'd like to call the meeting back to order and I would like to sit Commissioner Grillo and Corinne for the other two absent commissioners that I had forgot about. Sorry, gentlemen. So we're all voting. Moving on, um, public, uh, public participation at this time. If anybody would like to speak to the commission about any issues that are not currently on our ag agenda, please come forward and state your name and address for the record. Come forward, Walter. Nope. Are you on the agenda tonight, Walter? No, no, no. Uh, Walter Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road. There is an item on the agenda about Costco, but it's not, I'm not talking about that item, but I am talking about Costco, and it's the signage they have in front of Costco where it says keep right. To me, that's ridiculous. It's, it makes the entrance to that place even worse than it already is, and it's just, it, it's annoying, and, and, and I don't think when Costco was originally approved, it was not, it was approved for having two-way traffic in front of the building, and they're limiting it to one, and that's, that was my only thing, but it has nothing to do with the parking that was pre-approved or nothing, so I just wanted to make You're that You're talking clear. in the private parking lot. Up in front of the store, up in front not of the, store. the street, not on the street. But again, it where was they got it all coned off. Yeah, and but but again, that was approved by this commission, not this commission, but a previous commission, as a two-way road, and then they decided to put these signs out. And to me, it just it just it well, just bottlenecks the traffic there. Well, everybody's trying to go because yeah. you're not stopping the traffic; it's still going both ways. Yeah. And. It's yeah. gridlock. It's I know gridlock. Exactly, exactly what you're talking so I don't, about. Again, I don't know what you can do, but I just wanted to bring it up. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Thank you, Walt. Keep doing what you're doing. Great Thank job. you, Walt. Anyone else like to speak to the commission? Please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Ken. Am I on for tonight or is Yeah, well. Okay, so I'll hold back. <laughs> is that what you wanted to talk about? Yes. Okay, we'll, we'll call you up when that comes on. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none. Um, bond releases, I don't see any tonight. Uh, old public hearings, public hearing 3117 MA 1297 Enfield Street, and I believe they asked for it to be tabled till the next meeting. So if anyone is here for the Felician Sisters, they have tabled this again until the next planning and zoning meeting. At that time, you're welcome to come and speak. Do we need to move on that or is it all set, Lori? Can I have a question? Um, the second letter, that's a different one. For an extension. Sorry, what? This is an extension of time. Right, this is the second request. Okay. This is a different one. It's a different one. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. All set. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we table public hearing 3017 MA to our next meeting of November 11th, I believe. I'd just like to enter for the record at the request of the applicant. Correct. And I, I can read, read the, in terms of, we did get in, Lori Witten got an email regarding the Felician Sisters on October 22nd from Carl Landalina. Lori, on behalf of my clients, the Felician Sisters and the community builders, I request that the public hearing on our zone change application be continued to November 18th, and I believe- 11th is a holiday. Oh, the 11th of Holly. Okay, so it may, maybe it is the 18th. I believe this date is beyond the 35 allowed for closing the public hearing. My clients hereby grant an extension of time to the commission to close the hearing up to and including November 18th. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to contact me. Carl Landolina. So I'll make a, I'll, I'll make a motion that we... It, it, Post, uh, table it till November 18th. <laughs> Second. Second. Motion is made and seconded by Commissioner Alimo. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Unanimous. New public hearings. Public hearing 3013, 51 Enfield Street. Special use permit application to convert a non conforming use to a less intensive non conforming use for a car wash and motor vehicle detailing facility. Is there anyone here for the applicant? 
And, and Mr. Chair, there, oh. there's also a, a request to table this um, application, and it was received by Laurie Witten on um, October 30th from Ann Vassar. And it says, states, hello, could you please give me a 65-day extension for public hearing 3013 51 Enfield Street, PL 21392. That is tabled for October 28, 2021. Thank you. Diane Pe Pagano. Questions? So, Mr. So Chair, I'll make a, a motion that we table, you know, public hearing 3013 to our next meeting on November 18th. Second. Motion's made and seconded by Commissioner Petronella. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Public hearing 3019-110 High Street. I'll start I'll start with Spirit. roll call. Yep. Um, Ken, Ken Nelson. Here. Frank Alimo. Here. John Petronella. Here. Vinnie Grillo. Here. Nes Nelson Correa. Here. Corinne Majmadar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. And the Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at their next regular meeting on Thursday, October 28, 2021, at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application. Public hearing 3019, 110 High Street, special permit application for change of use of the property as a daycare, town of Enfield owner, William and Melissa Adams applicant, map 25, lot 75, Thompson District 5 zone. Welcome. Name and address for the record, please. Sure, Melissa Adams, 272 Abbey Road. And William Adams, 272 Abbey Road. Here. Welcome. Yes. Tell us a little bit about what you'd like to do. Um, we would like to turn 110 High Street back into a child care facility. We currently own three child care centers in Enfield and are full, and we were contacted that it was for sale and thought it would be a great opportunity for us to expand in the town. Great. Commission, any questions? I, I have one. In, in terms of, you know, I'm, I'm looking at, you know, some of the conditions that we have for this application and... You know, I, I guess it, it's a matter of the, you know, calculation for the parking for the um, daycare. And I understand, you know, the requirement that, you know, every employee have a parking spot. And I, I guess what I, and, and I understand that there has to be some logistics to get cars in when, when people are dropped off and picked up so that there's not a significant backlog into the roadway. But from, from what I understand of, of my understanding of your property, you are set back you know, quite a ways. There's a significant driveway that comes in, and then you have to turn around and come out. And, you know, I, I guess the, the question I have for staff is that there's a requirement that you need six spaces or for every six you know, I, I guess daycare, you know, students, 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 whatever they're called, you need one parking spot. And I'm saying, I'm thinking, well, how, how the heck is this person that, you know, how did, you know, if, if somebody's in daycare, they're probably under the age of five. And, you know, is, is there is really a requirement that, you, you know, I, again, I think that the logistics of the access to, to the, you know, facility has to be defined and, and looked at but you know to actually physically require additional parking um, for I guess persons who can't drive and will never drive you know while they're using that facility seems to me to be a little outdated but you know again I'm, I'm just wondering what the reasoning for that is if, if staff can clarify that Well, I'm going to let along ben with Rich's comments, couldn't we reduce that quite a bit because the children will be driving the little smaller battery powered cars? <laughs> <laughs> little Teslas? <laughs> so and they're going um, green. They're all electric. You know, we, we base our reports on what the regulations say, but you do have the ability if the applicant shows that they don't need this parking to modify the parking. But I'm going to let Ben. Because he's the one that reviewed this. And for officially, this is Ben Winter, our new assistant town planner. Yeah, I don't know if I can, you know, offer a solution, but just to clarify, the 
that's the ratio given in the regulations. So um, that's what it was based off of. Um, so that's where the numbers came from. Um, you do have the power in the regulations to um, alter the parking that might be required, but that 28, 28 spaces is the approximate number based off of students. No, 85 and 14 staff. So that's where the numbers came from. I don't know if I can speak to that for a minute, just about logistically, um, just because we own three centers. We are open from 6.30 to 5.30. We don't have all families dropping off at the same time. Um, our largest facility right now has 85 children, which is the proposed amount that we're asking for for 110 High Street. And at no time do we have more than four families at a time because some come at 6.30, mm -hmm. um, some come at 8, some come at 11. Also with that, some families have four or five children, so they're not 84 uh, separate families coming in to park as well. Um, but in case that was an issue, we did contact Molina's across the street because I do understand when it was a child care center for the town that there was a reciprocal parking agreement that the staff could park in that lot. So in the event that we do need additional spaces, they have agreed to let us park in their lot. How many, how many students are in a class with how many teachers? Depending on the age group, if they're under the age of three, there is a one to four ratio. One to four. And then if they are over the age of three, it is one to 10. One to 10, okay. Are you good with that? Just, just uh, quickly, when, when, when a town operated this facility previously, um, obviously it had the same parking, and, and it, I'm going to guess it had the same amount of students. Were there, were there any issues at that time? Laurie, are you aware of if anything? If I may, uh, we uh, came up with this great idea. We had the, uh, the fortune of running into the previous director, and she said, that, well, that's how we did it. We uh, talked to the folks over at Molina's, and. Uh, they allowed us to park there, and uh, that was that was their solution. Yeah. So, I, I mean, based on that, I certainly yeah. have no issue with the yeah. waiving a parking requirement. Corinne? Yes. The question I have is, in your reasonable expectation, do you think the number of parking spaces available, 16, as listed here, is that sufficient for most routine usage of 12 months? It, it, yes. it is. Would you be comfortable in saying that in the event someday there is an access, you will have excess number of parking requirement because you had an event, a function or something, you would have somebody directing the traffic to make sure the emergency vehicles can get in and out without have getting blocked by any parked cars? Yeah, in order, yes. The, the manager we have on site has eyes on the uh, the driveway, if you will, and the reason being is, is COVID. And if let's well, so just go a couple moments about how we changed our, our uh, yeah, entrance. Yeah, I mean, and because of COVID, parents don't come in and stay; they simply drop off. So it is a very quick turnaround time. So um, in the event that there was a backlog, we would absolutely go out to direct traffic. But again, um, and because parents are not allowed to come in, we don't seem to have that backlog because they simply can't stay. So I don't foresee that being an issue. Yeah. No, I'm comfortable with 16. I just wanted to hear from you that you're comfortable with it. Yes. Thank you. I'm good with it. The only thing that I would ask the commission to make a condition of approval is the drop off and pick up at the Enfield Public Schools yeah. is ridiculous. JFK is flowing out onto uh, Raffia Road. It obstructs traffic. There's police officers directing traffic now. I mean, same school, less kids, and nobody walks anymore. I, I don't know why these kids aren't taking the buses, but it is a very, very, it's a safety hazard. So I would ask that a condition of approval would be that your flow of traffic does not dump into High Street. If that is the case, and it's kind of along with what Corinne said, the additional cars are going to have to wait in the parking lot across the street so High Street remains open. That's going to save you money having to hire a police officer, but we can't keep letting this 
happen. You know, I, I have grandkids who are in daycare. I drop them off also. And like you said, it's you pull up, they're right there. You know, bye bye, I love you, <laughs> and gone. Yeah. So, um, and most parents are late for work and they're in a hurry and they want to go. So, that would be the only condition I'd make. I don't think you need all the parking. And again, like Commissioner Petronella said, it's funny the town got away with it with all these years. And so, I'm good with it also. Commissioner Alimo. I'm just, uh, thank you. Just looking over um, the application here and the department comments. Um, the only one I commented so on this was the, I think the most important one in this use for children is the fire marshal. Absolutely no issues at all, no concerns. So with me seeing that, I'm good with the application. Thank you. It's a town building, a newer town building. It's a newer town building. That's a nice building That's they nice. got yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> With daycares, uh, um, daycares, the fire marshal's office, uh, That's they do building. very uh, thorough work and make sure it's all safe, for, of course, for the children. So seeing that in the staff report, yeah. good luck to you. Didn't Thank I you. see a page in here where our grandkids get 50% off? <laughs> if, uh, if, if, your, uh, if your sons or daughters work for us, they do, right? <laughs> oh, really? You offer that to your employees? That's great. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So tell us the name of the daycare and give yourself a little, you know, commercial. Uh, I try to give it to everybody. You are in town, so people know you, but let them know about your new location and how many spots you'll have opened up when you plan on opening. And, go ahead. and what other ones do you own while you're? Yeah, um, they're all right on Route 5, so it's Bright Beginnings Child Care Center. We're next to Alcorn, we're next to the Enfield Inn, and then in the Astros Plaza. Oh, my grandson goes uh, to the one near the Enfield Inn. Yes, he uh, does, yep. Yeah. Oh, you recognize the last name? Yep. <laughs> Yep, absolutely. So we have 55 staff and 180 oh, wow. children, and we hope to expand to 84 more children and um, should be open hopefully in January. January. One of the very few daycares to stay open through the, the COVID uh, crisis. If you, if My son and daughter-in-law absolutely loves your facility. Thank you. We get so you own the one next to Alcorn? Mm -hmm. I went to uh, my kids preschool went to that there. Country yeah. day school was a country yeah. day. Back, I mean, it, back in the late 90s, you know. But. I have evidence, actually, that it was a daycare as, as far back as 1968. Yeah. Wow. And uh, there's a, there was a fire marshal or fire station uh, award or something. Yeah. I was there. We did the little hand plates. and <laughs> Yeah. That's Wow. So my grandson's going to your place now, and his father went to your place when he was small. Yeah. Wow. Woo. Well, Hopefully. congratulations. <laughs> oh, well, I hope congratulations. Yes. Yes. Uh, oh, that's right. It's a yeah. uh, I know. Uh, I'm congratulating them on their comments. Good <laughs> job. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So um, you can wait unless somebody's going to come up. At this time, I'd like to open this to the public. Is there anybody who would like to speak in favor or against public hearing 3019, special permit application for a change of use? for the property as a daycare from the town of Enfield. Going for the first time. Going for the second time. And the third time. Seeing none, how would the commission like to proceed? Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we close public hearing 3019. Second. Motion is made and seconded by Commissioner Petronella. All in favor of closing the public hearing? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions, it's unanimous. Mr. Chair, I'll move for the approval of PH 3019, um, the, the resolution um, as prepared by town staff dated October 28th, 2021 with the 20 conditions. Actually, there's 19 that are listed in our um, Resolution, and we, we're going to add one site-specific um, condition that the, the flow of traffic is not inhi inhibited on High Street. That some means or methods will be per per partaken to prevent that from happening. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Now, congratulations. Thank you so Thank much. You folks. Good night. Good night. Moving on, XSU 21-09-117 Post Office Road. Special permit application to install a modular classroom at Stowe School. Okay. 
The Enfield Planning and Zoning Commission will hold a public hearing at their regular meeting on Thursday, October 28, 2021 at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, concerning the following application, XSU 2109. 117 Post Office Road Special Permit Application to install a modular classroom at the Stowe School, Town of Enfield, Owner Applicant, Map 54, Lot 6, R33 Zone. Ken Nelson. Here. Frank Alimo. Here. John Petronella. Here. Vinnie Grillo. Here. Nelson Correa. Here. Corinne Majmadar. Here. And Richard Suzak is here. Okay, is there anyone here for the applicant? Mr. Chairman, I'll be representing the town for this application. Okay. So um, they, the Stowe Early Learning Center has is uh, pretty much packed. They're 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 uh, trying to uh, find some more room for a recreational use. So they've uh, decided to put in this 24 by 66 modular. It's literally going uh, over a basketball court. So the only impact will be um, digging of uh, utilities. Uh, pardon? Utilities. Yeah, yeah, but just power actually. So they're gonna have to bring power from the front to the modular, but otherwise it's just digging um, foundation in the into the court. <laughs> so it's just literally going to be picked up from one place, put there, and that'll be it. That's what there they said at JFK. Yeah, they, they won't have any impact. There won't be any impact from increased children because this isn't going to increase the enrollment. It's just an additional place to have a recreational activity. And how long is this for? Until they decide not to do it. <laughs> if anything, they might actually add another one later. So... So, so it's not a temporary. Uh, it's it's. A t I mean, for now, it's a temporary modular. I mean, you know, I I think that they're there until they're not needed. Um, apparently, there were three there when was it? Crack had occupancy there. There were actually three modulars there at that time. So, ironically, they got all taken away, and now they're putting another one back for the Enfield use. I used to plow in the back, so it was behind. So I think it's mic's on. It's to the side. It's, it's more to the side. So did they, do you have an idea what these modular looks like? Because you're definitely going to see it from the road. I don't have a I picture of it. I think. I thought we included. So no or maybe you, I do and I miss those. No. No. No, no, you there, didn't. There's no. no elevation. There's no elevation. I'm just saying mm -hmm. that the modules trailer. they did have were, were set way behind the school, almost. Yeah, the school yeah, they were. South or to the right, so mm -hmm. you never even really knew they were there. Yeah. They were actually classrooms they were using their modules for. So that's what these are. They're, it's, it's a classroom. It's actually two classrooms. And it's just instead of, instead of educational uh, use, it's going to be a recreational use. So... Would we allow a business to do this for an undetermined amount of time? Because I, I got to say, they looked ugly in front of JFK, and they were there for, what, 15, 20 years? Well, I think that um, if it meant all the side setbacks or the Vulcan area requirements, we probably would. We don't allow storage trailers. This isn't a storage trailer. It's, it's basically a classroom. On wheels? No, it's going to be on a foundation. They're digging a foundation. It's a, actually a significant amount of foundation. It's, it, I didn't say it was temporary. I said it's a modular classroom. It also looks like they're putting in a new electron, electrical transformer. Right. For probably they for plan that. on having this for some time. Yeah, so the electrical transformer, I would imagine, is to supply the new uh, modular mm -hmm. classroom. Right. So there's going to be quite a bit of see digging it, then. See what it looks like? But, uh, right, but it's going to be digging be into ground. asphalt. Yep. What do you guys want to do? I mean, we would require to see something like this from anybody. 
I, I guess, you know, is, is there, you know, a, different options that we can get for, you know, the appearance of the modular unit? Because I know, I know that, you know, in, in terms of, you know, they are quite flexible as to, you know, what accessories you can get with them so that it wouldn't look totally out of place. In terms of if it's you know visible from the side of the building rather than have you know flat roof trusses or, or flat roof structure, possibly you know we can get some kind of a a pitched roof structure on it so it looks more like a, a home. And and in I don't know if that if I'm not sure if that would be possible. These are um, prefab and is, is they it kind something of come that you, as is as it something that the town already owns or is the town going to purchase it? Um, the Board of Ed is purchasing it. But so if you're going to purchase it, you can buy whatever you want. Actually, it's actually I believe it's a long lease. Or right, but, but yeah. In terms of, but you normally, you know, it, it, as long as you, it, it, you don't have it in your backyard and you're just going to be re relocating it, realistically, you can make it look like anything you want. You know, all you have to do is sort of pay some additional costs associated with that, and. You know, again, going along the lines of uh, Commissioner Grillo's statement is that, you know, it will be quite noticeable now that it's going to be in a side yard rather than in a rear yard. Um, and, and it's sort of hidden. I mean, it's kind of. No, you can see the basketball yeah, hoops yeah, clear as day see, from yeah. post office. Mm -hmm. So, and again, I, I don't know if that that's a real concern or not, but, you know, again, you know, if, if we had sort of a, a photograph of what it looked like, I'm, I'm just looking at, you know, the foundations. And, and I imagine even though that you don't show it, there's going to be a ramp, there's going to be some stairs or, you know, and, and I... Ex I think it's, it, it's, it's just um, the little stairs going up to the, uh, but, the but door. But does it have to be handicap accessible? I don't believe so. Probably ground level. Mm, no, I'm looking at the, the photo. Oh. The, again, the foundation, it says it's up like, you know, three feet. There must be yeah. ramp, maybe. So, ramp. The, I mean, there may be a ramp. Probably a ramp. I don't look at it that close. But so, would, would you feel better if I got the rendering of the actual unit itself? Well, we'd require that from any yep. applicant. Okay. I, I'm, I'm surprised not, we don't I'm, have one. I'm kind of I mean, I'd like to don't. move and get it. I know they're in a hurry for it. I'm pretty sure. Um, uh, and if I if I may, Mr. Chairman, you know, this this happens often. Um, department comments, engineering, none. Health, none. Building, none. Water pollution control, none. Fire department, none. Police department, none. Who's the applicant? The town. Okay. But they still falls under the jerks. They still have to have comments here. I mean, we don't even have a drawing of it. I know. There's nothing. That's, um, so we need more if information. This was a, an, a resident. Uh, I agree. The door. Right. So it's there's no comments. For, I mean, there's no information where I'm going. Right. Really, if we have a little more information. So okay. is everybody in is agreement all you need we want to see the more? And by this, did this circulate through the departments? Every application circulates through the departments. Okay. So it's I'm assuming, no, I'm assuming none of the departments system. have any issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, Stowe's another one that's got a serious traffic problem yeah. backing out on the Hazard Memorial is unbelievable. Right. Onto North Street. Yep. I think we're all okay. in agreement. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You got a well, sense of direct. Well, also, oh, sorry, uh, uh, there, there's no requirement for uh, uh, for a site plan s submission with this application at all. Well, we gave you um, a photo. sort of the GIS version. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, it's it. Realistically, there's like no grading. There's just cutting of the foundation so it's literally just going to be plopped right there so it's on piers yeah not a foundation oh you're right i'm terminology you're right N normally yeah, normally when you're adding a square footage to a a parcel or a building um you'd have to meet certain requirements or show that that you're meeting the requirements of uh, uh coverage impervious surfaces uh, uh, or, right. or, or how all of that relates and, and so it's already impervious yeah. so it's going to be placed on an impervious surface mm -hmm. uh, no parking effect uh, uh, I take it it doesn't affect uh, any, any of the parking requirements nope they don't they don't they don't have any plans to um, increase the enrollment this is just so they have room for different programs 
And there's no sanitary hookup for this? Or is there it? Won't be, there, there will not be a need for bathrooms there. Mm -hmm. I guess the program that they're planning on has like 45, it's 45 minutes. They're going to have hand washing stations. Okay. If they need to go to the bathroom, they would, if the school's open, um, they'd have to go across the way and across the parking lot with supervision mm -hmm. to the school. Okay. All right. Just as a quick thought, in terms of during the inclement weather, you know, how, how does that work in terms of, you know, getting the kids out there? Because normally, I, th I think for a lot of these modular classrooms, they're, they're a whole day facility where, you know, once you're there, you don't necessarily have to traverse through the parking lot if it was like pouring rain and, and you know, somebody doesn't have a raincoat or something and, and all of a sudden it says like, you got to go over there and, and it's like, oh, really? <laughs> you know, how does that work in terms of, you, you know, the logistics of it, you know, with, without it being covered? I you know, guess and, and, maybe, and maybe, you know, we can have get an umbrella. Well, I, you know, I mean, I, I'm just I being mean, practical in terms of, you know, it's the same as if you're going from the car to the building. Um, you know, right, they, but but, but like, again, I think that most part nowadays, you know, most people, you know, have a, you know, their parents drop them off with an umbrella and whatnot. But you know, to have mm -hmm. to tra have to traverse and yeah, if you have an emergency where you do have to use the bathroom and it's raining and all of a sudden you get you get four times as wet, <laughs> so, so I don't know. Okay, so you basically you want the re the rendering. Uh, I think we want everything that's required of an applicant. Also, Laurie, if I may, um, the, uh, the the they submitted a foundation plan, um, and, and, and that plan is S-101, and it's titled Foundation Plan and Sections in uh, Building 6, um, which is fine. Well, this is, it's not site-specific. This is for a, a, a job in Tolland. Birch Grove Elementary School in Tallinn, and, 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 and the dimensions I don't believe even correlate with what they're they're proposing on their application, which is 24 by 66. These dimensions are 86 by 86 by uh, 24, roughly I think overall. But 24 by 86. Yeah. So, anyway, a little little conflict there in in, in dimension. Okay. It, 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 it should tie out yeah. to what they're proposing. And we approve what, that. what they're submitting. 24 by 86. Yeah. Is that it for questions for now? Yep. Okay, right. at this time. Table it? No, I want to open okay. it to the public first. Oh, okay. At this time, I'd like to open XSU 2109 to the public. Is there anybody who would like to speak in favor or against? this application. If so, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Going for the first time. Going for the second time. Going for the third time. Okay, at this time I'll enter, uh, entertain a motion to table this special permit. So I'll move. Second. Motion is made and seconded. All in favor of tabling this application? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, it's unanimous. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Just keep any paperwork you have for that. And like the Felician sisters, they'll be coming back. We've got to try to keep our paperwork so they don't have to keep reprinting for us every meeting. And I'm just as guilty. New business, SPR 1870, 101 North Street. Is there anyone here for the applicant? If so, please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Christopher Marcy, 39 Parker Street, Enfield. Welcome, Chris. How are you? Good. Tell us a little bit about what's going on. Basically, we just want to pave in front of the drive, in front of the building, fence it off, and put another RC track there. Okay. Lori, any input? Take your time, breathe. I was just looking up. So um, 
the zoning enforcement officer actually cited this this business because they had put this I guess well he's I guess it's called the racetrack for the the remote control cars in the front in the front yard setback where there should be at least five feet to pavement and and 25 feet of landscaping so <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me um, so uh, the applicant came in and spoke with him, and, and uh, so Rick suggested that he could try to come in here because you do have the right to modify the um, landscaping requirement, but I'm not so sure that we have the right to allow this pavement and the recreational use within the front yard setback. So do you have any other explanation for this? Um, is they, uh, hasn't that racetrack been there for a, quite a long time? Yeah, it's but there was a section in front of it. like it's, it this was a concrete is, area, right? Room, and we repaved it, which I didn't know there was. But it's a, not a new track. The track has always been where it is, right? No, that is a new track. It is it's, a new track. It's, a, it's an area that was there that was paved, and then we paved further down. And I think it was Rick came down, said that I had to go, so I had a site plan done. We hired somebody to come. He was saying it was more about permeable surface. I had needed a percentage of permeable surface. So I hired a Delano surveying, and that's when it, it took too long because he was in the hospital, and that's when he sent me a violation, which I had called him about that, said that they were working on it. Then the survey company had talked to him because he was still in the hospital. His wife came down got the plans, we got them to you guys, and that's where we are today. So, I mean, that's that started like, it was right in the middle of COVID, and he was in the hospital. It wasn't with COVID, but it was, he was in the hospital for like two months. So, so there is an additional track other than the one that was always there? Yes. And a new fence. I noticed the so fence. We put so. the new fence up. Yep. So I, I contacted the fence company, they called planning zone about the fence, how far could we put the fence behind? And that's, I believe it's 12 feet off the road and then we paved behind it which the concrete area was there was pavement already there we tore that up and went in front of the building so that's what we did yes so Lori the fence is a legal distance off the road I, I don't believe that we have a separating distance for fencing, but it's got to be on his property. It's 10 right. feet, so they made it 12 so, feet is what... Right. So my so guess is that the 10 about. feet or 12 feet is off of the pavement, not off of the right, right off of the uh, property line. So you could put it on your property. Right. Well, if he's 12 feet off the road and the right-of-way is 10 feet, he's on his property 2 feet. Yep, that's which, what it looks which like. Makes it, which makes the fence legal, which I'm... Mm -hmm. Am I correct? No. No, I, I believe that what happens is on the east side of your property, which is closest towards North Street, or, or, or yeah, sure. Taylor Road, Taylor feet. Road, yeah. which is closest to Taylor Road, you, your, your racetrack is approximately 12 feet off the property line. And, and then when you start going towards the, the west, you know, at, you know, three quarters of, of the way down or two thirds of the way down, you're 10.4 feet off your property line. So for that last, you know, third of that racetrack, it, it narrows down to 8.9. So you're about a foot over the, the, the actual setback area. So not, not on the fence. There is no setback. No, 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 no. I'm, With I'm, the fence. I'm just going right. by it. We're, we're talking about the pavement. No, the fence. Right. I was sure. talking about the fence. Oh. Talking about the fence. Okay. Because yeah, I'm trying yeah. to make a point that well, the fence can't be 12 feet off if it's in, if the racing track is on his you know inside of that. So off of his property, it has to be closer than 8.9. Right. But what I was getting at is if the fence is legal, which right. we've established it is. Right. What does it matter what landscaping buffers behind it? You're not going to see it behind a six foot stock. I mean, we were fence. trying to make it look really. I mean, I think I, it was okay. good. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I, I, I guess I'm, I'm getting confused with the regulations. And, I am too. And, and you know, I, again, I think that we're, we're, we're actually looking at two things. Number one, the fence is, is an, in, in an acceptable location. Mm -hmm. The paving for the, the 
a racetrack is, is has a portion of it that encroaches upon the setback area. So, so we have to determine whether that last third that might be encroaching on a setback area, does that really affect, you know, the, I, I, I guess the intent of the setbacks and whether it, it causes a significant, I guess, deviation from, you know, the use of the land and the adjacent properties. It does it decrease the value of adjacent properties? So that should be our charge. So, you, right. So you have the farm here. Right. I know. Which is, oh my God. And you got Mr. LaCory here. I I, I, I'm just trying to, to, to again, and I think staff should have sort of separated the two from one from the other so that I, I don't have to explain. It. Right. I understand what I, the landscaping, I would say normally it's got to stay, but if the fence is legal and the fence can be closer to the road than the landscaping buffer, what what does it matter what we do behind that fence? You're not going to see it. Whether he paved it or he plants a whole row of arborvitaes, you ain't going to see it. I mean, so I, I know what the building was. Don't shoot the messenger. No, 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 I know. I know what this building was. I know what this company has done to the building, probably the only ones that have invested significantly in this area. I know the two properties on both sides of them are hindering the value of this building. So I'm willing to work with this gentleman because he's worked with the town to clean up a, a pretty blighted property for years. That's where I stand. I, I agree in terms of, you know, I just want to make sure that we, we're not just, you know, we're trying to make it as transparent as possible as to what our actions are and, and what, what we're trying to achieve. And, and that's what all I'm just trying to do is say, you know, there is some, I guess, minor deviations from the regulations and, and whether we're, we're fine with that, those deviations because it, they don't have a substantial effect on, you know, the adjacent properties and the intent of our regulations. All set. Anyone else? Okay. You did lose a section of fence in the wind, so you should make. I actually fixed that. Did you? <laughs> Can I ask you a question, actually? Sure. Now, when you're talking about a property away from the road, if I had an entrance there where it's already concrete, could we pave that? Or is that not acceptable either? Like, there's a whole concrete pad that's paved, that's, that's there, that you probably know. If I had somebody come in and tear that up and repave that, would that be something that we could do? Well, I would think you're just resurfacing an existing parking lot. Well, it's it's concrete. It was a but greenhouse. You're, right. But, you're, oh, it was a greenhouse. But like the section that we paved in the front was there was pavement there when we ripped it. It was just kind of it was kind of all crappy there. There was no landscape in the front of there before. Right. I, absolutely. So what I would suggest is work with the staff, yep. try to come up with a solution. Mm -hmm. Again, we're always open to uh, informal meetings or informational come to us. If there are issues that Lori says, this is the regulation because she has to follow yep. them, come to us and we'll try to work with you. Okay. You know, like this is, I mean, if a fence can be 10 feet off the road, why is a landscaping buffer 25? If we well, can't see what's behind the fence. about myself because we, we had called about the fence and then Mm -hmm. I hired a paving company to do right. the other part. I, I would assume yeah. that they knew what they were doing. If you were in a different location on a different street with different neighbors, mm -hmm. I, I personally might have a different opinion. But where you are, I don't see any harm to anybody. If anything, you're blocking out blight mm -hmm. from your customers so they can't stare at it all day while they're yeah. were, uh, at your facility. It seems like it's very popular. It's used a lot. It seems like the yeah, people yeah. enjoy it. There. Yeah. Can't tell. He's got huge fences now he around does. it. <laughs> well, I, the fence was kind of a two thing because the driving range is across the street, yeah. and when it gets windy and stuff, it's blowing all over the place. So yeah. I, he kind of likes that. So yeah. I mean, the golfers like it too. So I mean, yeah, nice. Kind of did two things at the same right. time. No. Anyone else? No problem. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Corinne. Yeah, the. <clears throat> Staff comment does say that the commission under section 10.20.C may modify the buffer standards when adjoining land uses 
are sufficiently protected. In what I've heard and what I know of the property, the adjoining properties are sufficiently protected and are not adversely in any way affected by this development. So based on that, I would probably go along with the uh, less than required setbacks that he has. Mm. So I'd like commission to consider that. It's, I guess, a lot more uh, in line with being able to modify. Uh, that's my opinion. Thank you. Anyone else? I'll entertain a motion. I say in a public hearing. Hmm. Site plan modification. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. No okay. problem. Mr. Chair, I'll move for the approval of... Um, Mr. Chair, I'll move for the approval of SPR 1870, um, the resolution as prepared by staff, um, dated October 28th, 2021. Second. Motions made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? You're all set. Uh, thank you for doing a good job with the building. Like I said, if you want to do something with those cement pads, contact Lori or someone in the office, and we'll work with you and try to get something going for you. All right. Have a great night. SPR 1872-109 Elm Street, Site Plan Review Application to Demolish Existing Office Building and Construct a New 3,200-Square-Foot Car Wash Facility. AAA Club Alliance, Owner. Anyone here for the applicant? If so, please state your name and address for the record. Yes, good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the Commission. Carl Landolina, Fahey and Landolina. 487 Spring Street, Windsor Locks, Connecticut. I'm joined by uh, the gentleman behind me setting up the easel, Jim Bernardino from CMG Engineering. I, Jim, usually they like it over there, I think. So while he's doing that, I'll just say uh, briefly that um, the application is, is, is fairly straightforward. It's a request under the site plan regulations um, section of your zoning regulations, the, uh, the applicant um, is the contract purchaser of what is now the AAA office building. As you know, they are constructing another building and will be moving into that other building at some point. Uh, in, in, uh, they have placed the, the uh, building on the market and my clients have uh, entered into a contract with them. This is a BG zone where car washes are allowed by site plan use. Um, Jim, you about ready? I'm running out of things there to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so um, obviously uh, Jim will go through the details. The, the plan is to uh, uh, raise the building and build a new car wash and facilities near that. Um, AAA will actually be staying in the building for some short period until their building is finished. And uh, upon when they vacate the building, my clients will go in and take over and, and destroy the building and construct what Jim is about to describe to you. Very good. Thank you. Uh, for the record, Jim Bernardino with CMG Engineering uh, in Sturbridge, Massachusetts, the civil site engineers for the um, proposed development. Um, as, <coughs> as Carl mentioned, uh, 109 Elm Street, existing AAA building. Uh, this is just the proposed survey. What's up on the board is exactly the same, which is in the uh, engineering packages that were provided. I just kind of darkened in some lines for ease of view. Um, we have the existing AAA building. It's a multi-story building. We're about uh, 3,000 square feet on both floors, so about a 6,000 square foot existing building, uh, gross floor area. Proposal is to raise and rebuild that. Right now, the proposed entrances uh, to the site I mean, the existing entrances to the site are from the private driveway associated with the 
uh, shopping center in the rear of the property. So the proposal is to maintain the access off of that private lane with no new access points off of Elm Street. Uh, again, a couple of highlights I just wanted to point out. Um, along the frontage here, we do have some impervious areas that are inside some of the setbacks. Along the uh, eastern property line, we have about only a one or two foot buffer zone. Our proposed developments are actually going to enhance some of those uh, setbacks and buffer zones. I'll touch base on those in a minute. So once again, the proposal is to raise and rebuild and start from scratch. Someone put everything upside down on it for me. Um, so obviously, same site, we're about 1.02 acres, so we're just over uh, about 45,000 square feet or so uh, of land area. Uh, the proposal is for a 100 foot long, 32 foot wide, uh, fully automated, um, soft touch car wash. Um, we're going to be closing one of the existing site driveways servicing the existing property, and we're going to be limiting it to one. Uh, associated with the car wash, we have uh, how many? We have approximately 17 vacuum um, stations, which will be you know free as part of the car wash service. So, with a free service um, for the car wash, I mean, a free service for the vacuums, we've developed our site access and circulation to account for that. So, the way that the proposed development operates is we have full access uh, off of the private road for the shopping center. All the uh, access uh, to the site will be funneled through a one-way driveway through a, a pair of automated uh, pay stations, scissor type of uh, access points. You could pay at the, um, at the stations, would come up and you would gain access to the car wash. Now you would go through the car wash. Upon e exiting of the car wash, you have the ability to enter the free um, the free vacuum facility. Uh, also in the areas that we have, we are maintaining th three employee parking spaces, conventional parking spaces plus one accessible parking space close to the main um, building. Um, they, customers can also use those parking spots to pull up and buy gift cards, things of that nature. Um, so the, the way that that's monitored is obviously if say someone pulls in, forgets their wallet, or decides that they do not want a car wash, we do have full-time attendants that will be there at all times. Obviously, it's not a unattended car wash, so there will be at least probably one to two employees at all times on the, um, uh, uh, at the facility. So if that were to ever happen, someone decided not to want a car wash, we do have an escape lane. Obviously, the attendant would have to be alerted. They would be able to bypass the, the gate mechanism and they would be able to come through and escape without going through the car wash. Um, as far as um, other amenities, well, not necessarily amenities, but other uh, site aspects of the property, we do have a, a dumpster enclosure, obviously. Uh, it'll be an opaque fence surrounding it to um, you know, provide screening for the dumpster enclosure. Uh, we also have two enclosures to house the vacuum units. Uh, these vacuum units are going to be um, on approximately, approximately a 10 by 10 pad, but we also screw, um, screen those uh, from view with an opaque screening as well. Um, touching base on screening, uh, we have developed a comprehensive landscape plan, highlighted some of the key components down on the bottom uh, display for you. Uh, a couple of key components in the landscaping. One, I touched base at the entrance, I mean, at the uh, beginning of the presentation uh, along the eastern property line. Uh, we're actually enhanced that setback to meet the minimum requirements. Currently, that's an existing non conforming uh, buffer between the adjacent property. We're enhancing that, providing the, um, you know, just over the minimum uh, requirement for the landscape buffer. Uh, we also maintaining the, the minimum landscape buffer requirements along the other property lines as well. Uh, and one of the, what I think is a, a key component that we're doing is we're maintaining two of the large mature trees in the front. So when you're going down Elm Street, we're gonna be maintaining that corridor as you see today. There's a substantial 24 inch tree, maybe another 12 inch tree there. Those larger trees are going to remain. Um, and then obviously we're gonna supplement uh, the remaining uh, development with uh, additional landscaping, shrubs and trees and the like. Uh, additionally, we developed a uh, comprehensive site plan package 
uh, in inclusive of stormwater drainage mitigation uh, practices. Uh, we're actually decreasing the impervious on the site by approximately 1,800 square feet. So it's a, a net increase in landscape pervious surfaces. Uh, and we're also treating water coming off, to, off the site with a water quality unit to prevent or capture um, uh, sediment discharge as well as any floatables, petroleum products associated with parking lots and the like. Um, also, you know, to, impact, uh, to address uh, construction related impacts, we developed a comprehensive erosion sediment control plan consistent with the state guidelines, local regulations as well. Uh, full utility plan, uh, we have water, Connecticut Water Services, the property. We're going to need to install a new service out into Elm Street. So that's the only work that you will see in Elm Street is for the water line only. No new curb cuts, no new services or gas, everything that we're, all the other utilities we're going to be able to connect uh, to, you know, within the right of way or within the property limits itself without actually going into the roadway. But the water line will have to go into the roadway. Um, obviously, that's going to be subject to you know, final determination with the different utility companies, but our preliminary conversations, what we have on site is going to be good for our development presently. Um, we've also uh, had a uh, ART meeting. We've spoken with uh, staff, engineering, WPCA as well. Um, the comments have been received by all, and uh, we actually were able to incorporate uh, those uh, responses to the comments that we've received to date. Uh, with uh, an updated package uh, that has been submitted to the commission, which should be your, your current package as well. Um, you know, with that, um, there was uh, some minor uh, comments that we had from the town fire department. They questioned uh, site access uh, for their fire trucks. Uh, we've uh, met with them, we corresponded. We provided a truck template turning movement to the satisfaction of the fire department. Uh, that template is actually part of the overall development plan set at this point, so we included that uh, for part of the record. Uh, likewise, another uh, comment was uh, from the WPCA regarding some design standards for um, the sewer. Those are minor changes to the site plan which we incorporated and they also requested a estimated uh, daily water demand which we provided to those uh, um, to the WPCA as well as the commission. You know, uh, you know with that, uh, the remaining uh, development aspects, we did a comprehensive lighting plan as well to uh, demonstrate uh, no spillage over the property lines, no negative impacts to the surrounding properties or the roadway system. Um, you know, with that, that's the, the development in a, in a whole. Um, if... Uh, Jim, would you show the building elevations? Do you have uh, them? Well, the building elevations, I do apologize. I, we do not have a color plotter on the lodge sides, but I do believe the, uh, the commissioner should have a, a color copy 11 by 17, yes. Okay. So, um, you know, with that, it, it's a relatively nice building, I, I believe, for, for a car wash. Um, so with, um, you know, with that, if you have any specific questions on that, you may be able to answer it, but uh, obviously, um, th that the elevations were part of the um, submission for the board's consideration. Uh, so I don't know if there's anything else um, you'd like to add, Carl? Or we... so, so with that, I would open it up to the, the commission for questions. I just have a couple of questions. Are you going to have a gate at the exit? No, there will be no gate at the exit. So what's to stop somebody driving in the exit to get free vacuums? Free vacuums, obviously, they will be powered and circuited, so there will be no power to those after hours. Uh, this will not be a 24-7 operation. I believe you have 8 a.m., 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. will be the hours of operation. Okay. And are you required to have an oil separator? Um, yes. Yeah. Okay. We, and the, um, the actual car wash, we are implementing a reclaim system. Uh, so the, the reclaim system is part of the oil water separator grid chambers. So we're actually, each car that's going through the facility uses 35 gallons for each car wash. Mm -hmm. However, we only use 17 gallons of new water. We, right. we were able to withdraw 18 gallons from a recycling system that will be part of you know, the oil grid separating process. Right. Okay. Commissioners, anybody? 
Commissioner so, Lima. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I was looking at the, the new entrance exit. Yes. So um, the fire truck template, it looks like it goes out into the and out of the into the mall area, into the shopping center area. Yes. So what what's the the width of that? That's for that will hold um it looks like they put two trucks through there. Two, yeah, it, it's an extra over. Um, it's a very wide. Because you're taking one, one, one entrance or exit away and making one out of two. Correct. Right. Yeah. So, so let's go. and the other part of that is there going to be signage there? So we have have a 30 foot new driveway entrance. Okay. Dedicated entrance in, dedicated entrance out. And, and is it is going to be signage. Uh, um, we do anticipate um, probably directional signage. Right. Yeah. In yeah. this area, we haven't shown on the site plan, but we will be putting together a signage package to you know get administrative approval for. Okay. Uh, we do show a freestanding sign up front. Um, you know, obviously it's going to be subject you know the final right. detailing for um, planning staff review. But I do anticipate a you know directional sign up front as well and, oh, and it's not shown on the site plan though however and the gating the gating mechanisms um so i go to the east long meadow one and the springfield one i don't know if you're familiar with those golden car washes but is it similar to those where you can yes the, the, build, excuse me, the, the building the, the how you wash your car is very similar to east long sir meadow. like east can long you meadow come forward yeah. because yeah. we can you hear you but people out on tv can't hear you so yeah. Just state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Richard Smith, 241 Wool Swamp Road, Long Meadow, Mass. Vice President of. Um, so when you go to East Long Meadow Car Wash, it'll be basically the exact same experience, except you'll have the gates that we have at this. If you go to Springfield downtown, yes. Do you know how you pull in and the gates open up? Yeah. That's what we'll have here. So it'll be more similar to, to Springfield yes. and East Long Meadow. Yep. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Those two facilities are, are run by these guys. Yeah, they're Golden Nozzle. I assume yeah. they were. Yeah. yeah, he's Vice President of Golden Nozzle. Anyone else? In terms of your elevations, in terms of the, your windows that you have in the side of the building, are they faux windows or are they actually glass windows? Uh, I, believe, what Joe ended up with, I believe they were faux windows. Uh, on the opposite side it is our mechanical room um, with you know, storage for our chemicals, things of that nature. So that they are full windows uh, on that. So will they be lighted so they, you know, like during the night, they actually look like a, a building or are they going to really look fake? Um, well, I, I don't think they're going to look fake. They're going to do the best they can. Uh, I do not know if they're going to be, you know, have internal illuminations on that or not. Uh, I apologize for that, not having that answer. Okay. I, I mean, it's one of those kind of things where we don't want to look like an abandoned building at night so that, you know, there is some lighting that goes along, you know, with, you know, and, and again, I'm not familiar with your other facilities, so I'm not sure exactly how they, they look. Yeah, we have those windows at other sites. and It doesn't look abandoned at all. It looks very professional. All right. As, as, as long as the, there is some, you know, There's indication light. that, you know, it's a livable, usable, yes. actively utilized structure. Yeah, it's, it, it's very common in our, in our industry to use those windows where the equipment room is. Okay. Mr. Chair, I just have a follow-up to my... Uh, are you done, Commissioner? Yes, Sussex? yes. Uh, um, relative to the Springfield location, you have an option to have a little more work done, like some uh, in the interior stuff. Are you going to be proposing that here? Uh, no, this will be more like East Lime Meadow. Oh, just you, washing you just the car. Just go in and vac yeah. if you want to use the vacuum, vacuum and then leave. Thank you. Thank you. I guess, go ahead, Karen. Yeah, I think it's a very visible location. Elm Street is heavily trafficked area. AAA building gone and a new facility coming in. Uh, your plans look good. We definitely would like to see whatever enhancement you could make by way of additional lighting, whether it's in the parking lot, on the building, along the sides, especially facing Elm Street would be helpful. I'm not asking for anything uh, that makes it more difficult on you, except that uh, we would hope that it will look and blend in with the rest of the commercial nature and character 
of the neighborhood, which is all commercial. But uh, thank you. That's my basic comment. Yeah, thank you. If you see any of our locations, I think at nighttime, all our sites look very, very bright. We make our sites as bright as possible. So along with what Corinne just said, um, I have the same exact concerns. A matter of fact, it was probably four or five months ago, a car wash tried to go in right across the street on the mall property. And we voted no because we didn't feel it fit, uh, it fit in the area. Well, it wasn't zoned for it. Yeah. I understand that, but we didn't approve the zone change because we didn't feel it was fit right. for that area. Yep, correct. So this across the street, I don't know how this is any different. And I agree with Corinne. I don't know that this is the place for a car wash. I, I If there was a car wash that I would approve, my God, this is it. Because, it, I mean, looking at the pictures, the detail of the building, it's just not a glass tunnel like you see those cheap car washes. But I just... Yeah, I, I just I'm not sure how a car wash is going to fit in there, you know, not knowing what's going on with the mall and the mixed use that might go there. And I, I just there's no other that I know of service oriented business there. It's all commercial and retail. I, I mean, a little farther down the road, I'd be 100 percent OK with it. I just. That's my concern, and I want to hear from you guys what you think, because I'm not set either way yet. I mean, they really, they sold me on a beautiful building. They did, you guys, I mean, you go above and beyond with the gates and everything, and you're know, having three full-time employees there while you're open. A lot of car washes you pull into, you can't find anybody to, you know, reimburse your change because you couldn't get your Christmas tree out of the machine. So, may I comment on that, Absolutely, Mr. Carl. Yeah, for the record, Carl and Elena. So, uh, while I can certainly uh, appreciate your concerns and comments, um, I guess I would be remiss if I didn't uh, state for the record that this is a site plan application. So, the kinds of concerns that you seem to be raising, and I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not trying to put words in anyone's mouth, are not really relevant to this application. It's not a special permit. Um, the site plan is, a, is the lowest form of uh, discretion that the commission has, and we, we, we believe that it's a permitted use on the site. Um, obviously, I was involved in the one across the street, and, and um, you know, there were certainly legitimate reasons for turning that down, given the, the nature of that little campus over there. Um, but this is a BG zone. It's permitted. Um, and as you said yourself, uh, for a car wash, it's, it's a, you know, it's a, a, you know, I lived 100 yards, grew up from a car wash. It didn't look anything like this, but it's, it's a beautiful car wash. And I think we comply with all your uh, regulations that relate to, to site plan uses. So I, I would ask that you uh, obviously discuss as long as you want. But I think under those circumstances, um, I, I think it's something that you should very much consider approving as is. We, we were the applicant to cross the street also. Oh, you are. I, I assume that when I seen Carl. And you're still you. using him? He didn't get you approved the first time. You're going to be getting a discount this time. You know, yeah. you got, got to give me one out of the two. <laughs> All set, Carl? I am. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Right. Commissioner Grillo. Uh, thank you. Hi, uh, Carl. You and I don't see eye to end. Too many things, but this one I, I kind of agree with you on this one. Okay. Um, I, the car wash that they wanted to put across the street did not belong there because that was opening up a can of worms and that was going to put in a lot of things that we did not want. Um, I have noticed and I've looked around that most of their car washes and stuff are on main, are on main streets with plazas and shopping centers and so forth. Um, I think it's a nice car wash. I think where they want to put it now, I feel a lot more comfortable than where they were going to put it. Um, I think it's a, you know, they have the room in there. Uh, they have the space. I. I you got a couple stores in there. I, uh, me personally, just feel that uh, 
if that would be a spot, I think I'd feel more comfortable on that side. Definitely disagreed on the other side. That, but the other side of the road, I don't really have an issue with that one. But All right, thank you, Commissioner Suzak. Mr. Chair, I, I, I agree with you in terms of you know, uh, in you know, I'm not. The reason why I asked whether those windows were faux windows or not, when I first looked at the, the elevations, you know, I, I see too much like masonry. You know, it would be nice to soften, you know, the, the building to have a little contrast so that it just doesn't look like a plain, you know, masonry box. Um, and, you know, my initial thought was that it, it would look nice if it, if it had, because you do, you ha have some dormers that are introducing some clapboard you know materials and and i think that you know you have a water table that's running around the bottom of, of the the building just below the windows to, to sort of create a, some shadow line or some delineation for you know a, a, a different kind of material that might be used that would lend itself into being more you know a softer type of you know visual effect rather than you know just stark masonry you know walls but you know i i think that if we can sort of create something that that get, again blends with the I, I guess the surrounding you know buildings and, and I think that you know most new buildings are leaning towards you know having you know some rather than being one color building to have different you know combinations of materials and you know layering of, of coloring so that it sort of softens the effect of of that building in, in a particular area and you know and and i think that you know if we did something like that you know because when you look at a, a block building and it's all the same color you know it just looks like a block building all the same color but if you have you know a color along the base and then you have another lighter color or something that you know sort of complements it ab above that water table and that band that you have it, it would definitely sort of lend a little more residential type of you know or you know residential slash commercial system rather than a, a, again a a storage facility type of thing and right. and, and that's just what you, a, an opinion that that i have in in terms of if, if 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 i had any you know qualms it would be that you know I'd, I'd like to see it softened a little bit or have a little more you know contrast to the materials that are being utilized if i may um points are well taken we, we do understand um we did go through a pretty comprehensive uh design element with the architects with a lot of things in mind to break up the facades i'm not an architect by no means but obviously you know we did look at you know the various different options adding the doors adding the you know the masonry breakup line below the windows we do have multiple windows several several windows so i, I think and we don't have a 20 foot high wall i think it's only about 10 feet high broken up by um trim on the top trim below the windows on top of the windows um so i, I think the architect has done a very decent job with um incorporating many different elements for um you know to break up the you know uniformity of of the facades so um, we points well taken regarding the color but i think there's many other aspects that have been implemented as well that I think you may get that feel of, you know, not a, just a uniform color across the front of the property. Yeah. In, in terms of, you know, because everything's right now de determined as a mauve co type of color. And, and you know, I, I could sort of see if, if, you know, the base was, you know, a, again, a, a little darker color and, and you know, the, the, the masonry above that water table was, you know, a different, you know, colored you know, material where, again, it, it, it provides contrast rather than, you know, it's like if somebody dresses all in black or all in white, you know, if they dress in black and white, they look a lot, you know, they have a little bit of contrast or, or some delineation of, you know, this is my top and this is my bottom and, and sort of, you know, that type of thing. So, but that, that's just an opinion. So what if they colored the dormers. Mob, everything's mob. No, what if they colored the oh. dorms? I mean, because yeah. to give it more of a commercial look, like all the new, all the new, all the new stores facades, they're building, you know, the big dormers on the front of them, mm -hmm. and that would blend in with the plaza that's right behind it. Right now, it looks like a long ranch. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, if something is done to to sort of, you know, again, create a little bit of, you know, 
integration into in, utilizing some of the, the adjacent, you know, buildings that are there. And there's no guarantee that the adjacent buildings are going to be there forever either. So that, you know, we, we have to sort of temper, you know, what we're trying to, you know, match or what we're trying to, you know, complement recognizing the fact that you, you still have to, you know, and again, you know, I'm not trying to introduce a different type of material. I'm just trying to say, you know, let's see if we can't provide a little more pizzazz to the building so that it, it looks a little more. Yeah, maybe dress up the door. Yeah, dress something up. Right. Right. So Are you doing any signage on the building? On the building? On the building. Yes, there will be signage. Tell it all, so hear me breathing heavy. <laughs> um, yes, we will have signage on the building. Uh, at this point, we're just, uh, there's a. Uh, the entire exit sign. The exit sign over, um, sorry, if you want to. No, I just. Yeah. Off the top of my head, I, I don't have it. We we are in the midst of preparing a sign package, um, so there will be signs of uh, you know golden nozzle car wash on the side. It'll be you know entry uh, up over the um, entrance overhead doors. Um, at well, this I, point, I, I don't have the I'm detailing. I'm more concerned with about the front of the the front facade yes. on Elm like Street. No, are you having a, a big yes. golden yes. nozzle yes. on the building, or are you doing a pole sign? Pole sign. We're doing a pole sign. No signage on the front of the building. No. Because he, see something, that would give it more color. I mean, even if you change the peaks and, and you did, you know, white siding or white cedar shake impression or something just to, so it's not one big tan. So I, I guess we'll we'll consider that during the uh, final design phase and in the construction phase, but I, I can't yeah. promise that that's going to happen between now and then. Right. But certainly, we hear your comments, Commissioner Correa. Do you guys own the ones in? Uh, I think there's one in Tallinn and Vernon as well. Is that you guys? No, no. But, okay. But we're friends with him, and this building similar, is similar to his. So those buildings are really nice. They're not eyesores. In my opinion, the building would look good. I don't get too caught up in colors. I don't think we're trying to build a house here. Um, and I get the other commissioners saying we got to blend and do this. But I think it's going to provide a good service to the town because I don't know how many McDonald's we have in town right now. We have a whole bunch of McDonald's and gas stations and um, I think a pretty tight car wash over by Skidico. Um, I think you guys would offer a bigger, better service, you know, the free vacuums. And the free vacuums are based on when you purchase a car wash, correct? You just can't drive in and use the no, vacuums. You can't. You have to. So it's all tied into wash. the purchase. Right. And you guys have the monthly subscriptions like everybody else does yep. now with the. 19.99 a month. Okay. I mean, what is the right place for a car wash? Right there. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> yes. Right there is the best. Um, I know you guys got shot down across the street, which was probably a too congested. But I think getting rid of an older building, moving in with a new business is almost a positive. Um, I think colors are the colors. The windows are the windows. I know it definitely won't look like a run-down building at night. It's a brand-new building, well-lit. Um, okay, I thought you guys were the same, but... I know those those buildings. I drive by them quite a bit, and they're they're really nice. They're not a obstructive or obtrusive to the landscape in the area. Yeah, this this is a five million dollar project for us. Oh, I don't so I don't doubt it's beautiful. very expensive to put that building up. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would assume the building is going to be nice because you're tearing down a pretty nice building to put this there. So. You got to have pride, because otherwise you'd just be looking for the cheapest piece of land that you could get to put Which this up. And this, you're not. frankly, was not the cheapest p piece of right, land. Right, right, right. <laughs> um, I got. I had Commissioner Petronella first. Yeah, thank you, uh, Comm uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, with respect to the uh, building elevation plans, I'm looking at the south elevation. South elevation is um, Elm Street, correct? No. Yes. The, the south elevation 
the south elevation is Elm Street. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and so. so you, yeah, which says the rear side. So the, you got the rear side facing Elm Street, okay. And, and then I'm looking at uh, uh, on, on the roof, you got a PVC vinyl screening at the roof deck for mechanical equipment. Um, and that's going to be a dark bronze color. So I'm just trying to get my hands around that. Um, because yeah. yeah, you're, you're not showing, side, when I look at the east elevation side uh, and the west elevation side, it's not showing what that screening is, probably because the dormers are hiding it. But uh, I'm just wondering why that would be on the Elm Street side, which is, the, the, you know, the, of course, the, the street view side. So it seems seems a little bit odd to me. Um, with with respect to the, uh, um, I mean the colors. Every, everything seems to be one color except for the blue stripe. You got a water t table that's shown there, and and again, what what, what the commission, uh, 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 commissioner commissioner Suzak had said. Usually with the water table, it gives you a definition or defines two different colors. Um, you're not really proposing that. A little better imagination could have been done with that. And also a comment on the lighting lumen plan as prepared the the front of the building and, and again to me the front of the building is elm street but um if i look at the lumens from in front of the building to the street there's really zero so there's no lighting there so i'm looking at that as as a nighttime effect when when you know at 10 o'clock at night uh that building is not lit up at all on elm street it's dark uh, it looks like a closed, kind of abandoned building. I, I, I don't know if uh, uh, if the other uh, uh, um, commissioners have any input on that, but it, it, it does show the lumens as pretty much zero in, in front of the building. If something could be added for lighting, even if it were um, uh, on the soffit of the buildings, uh, so, some, some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, lights, yeah. Yeah, some cans that, that were lighting up the front of the building of, of some of, sort. More of a security lighting, something low level that yeah. will give an appearance that the building's there. Yeah. Maybe not occupied, but it's not a dark alley haven for hoodlums. Right. Uh, I understand. Yeah, so, so, so something in the overhang of the building that could get a down lighting that would yeah. light up and it, it would uh, shade or uh, shade, it would uh, shower the, uh, the, the front. Uh, of the building and downward, uh, I, I think would be a, a nice added touch. It would give the building a little bit of presence, if you will. Um, but, but going back to that mechanical equipment, uh, I'm, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think it's labeled wrong, John. Yeah. I think it's labeled wrong. No. He, well, they're showing Elm Street and the north elevation. That's south elevation. Yeah, this is labeled wrong, I think. This should be south elevation. We're, south is Elm Street. He's looking at picture three, one point one, and it says South Elevation Rear Side, and it is showing the screening for the HVAC, nope. which is right on Elm Street. Nope. Which this that's saying, in our eyes, that's the front of your building. This is saying North Elevation Elm Street Side. Yeah, this is going to be the front of the building, right? I can't see. This is going to be the front of the building. They, they just have it labeled wrong. It's labeled wrong. I, I, I can't make that determination um, as to what there may be. I apologize. Okay, shut it off again. Uh, I can't make that determination. Smitty may know. Uh, he may not as well. Um, when, when you look at it, I do understand we have the north side elevation. But when you're looking at the, the, the cars coming in and out on the elevation, Right. The cars coming in and out are right. That's right. It's correct. Right. That's the flow. Right. And that goes into the park. And the real windows are facing the street. Right. In, in, in terms of it, on your site plan, north is up. You know, north is towards the parking, towards the, the, right. the shopping center. Right. And, and the, the, the Elm Street is to the south. In, in the, if, if you look at your site plan yes. and you look at your north arrow. So, so basically, Elm Street would be the south elevation. It, and the other side would be the north elevation. You just have your elevations labeled correctly. This, you're calling this the Elm Street side, but you're saying north, it should be south. Right. Yeah, that's, 
Look at the cars going in the building. That's right. It's well, yeah, that's, that's right. So you got to flip the building. John is right. Well, it's wrong here though. No, it's not wrong there. Well, How's it wrong there? Because it says Elm Street, North Elevation. Yeah, that's wrong. Oh, that's, right. That's, yeah, that's wrong. Right, right. What he's looking at is right. So I'm thinking when I'm looking at this, I'm thinking this is what you're going to see from Elm Street. I like that side. That's what you will see from Elm Street. Right. Flip it around. Okay. Yeah, that's that's what you see from Elm Street. Right. Yeah. So you see what it see says. The cars north? are going the wrong way there. Right. Somebody messed up the CAD system. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The cars are going Elm Street, you're the wrong, wrong way. They're going in reverse. So the north what, elevation is what's facing the street. Right. You, yeah. So you can back in. So the, <laughs> the picture should be flipped off. Right. they got to flip it around. Yeah. That's the side you want to face. This is the side you want to face Elm Street, right here. Absolutely. With real windows, right? The, yes. The, those will be real windows in, in that elevation. Yes. And I no screening, that. no HVAC on the front of the building right. or the back of the building. Mr. Chairman, um, did you consider just putting some uh, some soft, low uh, landscaping along the building? Maybe just some bushes or something, just just to help. That might. Uh, I know you've got a couple. Well, you've got. The maples are there. Along the front, okay. along the front. Yeah. Along the uh, yeah, well, you do have um, a landscape bed with the sign that'll have. Um, yes, we so, do have, have um, a landscape bed in the front, obviously. Okay. But you know there is potential to add additional landscaping along the front if necessary. So probably shrubbery, maybe a few yeah, you know, small this, perennials. It, it, that that would help soften the building, I think. But the the uh, landscaping that you do have that is proposed with the sign will also um, help to chop up the the length of the building. Not necessarily across the whole, but at least you know maybe you know some every few feet or you know every every yeah. twenty feet or something. You know maybe yeah, we'll, they put a couple we can bushes. Do that. We'll we'll add some landscaping along the the front of the building. Yeah. Is it mm -hmm. grass anyways? It's just a grass strip anyways, right? Yeah, it, it's just grass, grass lawn. Right. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, I, I like to dovetail off what Commissioner Petronella was saying about the can lighting or recess lighting, if you would, like those peaks. If you just, you know, just bump them out a little bit where you could fit some cans, I don't know the width of them, but some indirect lighting or into your lighting package. John, I think that you were, yeah, I think that would look nice. Yeah, we can do that. Because the, actually for me, the building that's there now, looks funny because it's an office building. I think this is going to look nicer for me. <laughs> I think so. I agree. It looks like a big <laughs> brick block. Yeah. So I it <laughs> doesn't blend in with McDonald's at all or or uh, Starbucks or Denny's or any of that. Yeah. So I think you know for me. Yeah. Their parking lot don't flood. Their new one's going to. Well, oh, the, oh, you're talking about AAA. No, I'm oh, talking yeah, the new. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, some lighting, cans, and you could. Okay. So yeah, I, I think that's uh, a valid, um, a valid uh, option to yeah. in, in, uh, incorporate, whether a soffit lighting or maybe an accent lighting. Mm -hmm. you know, right. Using soffit can't support uh, that. You know, operationally, full disclosure, I'm very familiar with your locations, and I know they function great. I have the 1999 sticker on my car, oh. and I bring my I bring a fleet of cars there too. So I think all those gating things are going to work good. Well, I like great. the gates, and they're safe. So safety is for me is number one. That's why I asked about the egress and the park, uh, the driveway width, and so all those gating and safety pieces are more my, my uh, avenue where I come from, and I think that all works good, only because I've used them. I wouldn't say it was good, but I know it, I use them, so I, I think they work great. Well, you can use that pass now, Penfield. Oh, <laughs> well, I work in East Long Meadow sometimes, so that's why I'm going. So the pass is good at all the golden yeah, nozzles? absolutely. All 47. Even the ones you don't own? Well, we oh. own all the golden nozzles. Yeah. Oh, I thought you golden said nozzle. Vernon or? No, he said. We don't own the ones in Vernon. Vernon, I, We don't I own that one. They own. Very similar, Very similar to us. Oh, but it's not a golden nozzle. No. It's not. Oh, okay. Because, Classic yep. touch or something? So, 1995. Thank you for the selling those. <laughs> I drive a fleet through there. So. Is that unlimited? Yeah, you can go every day. I do when I'm there. Can you go more than once a day? Absolutely. Go all you want. You can go right around go back in again. I'm going to get it for sure. So the, so the vacuums in East Long Meadow, you don't have to pay the vacuum. Oh, because it's wide open there. Right. So we, we have no control over it. Mm -hmm. The gas customers can go use them. Right. 
But here we have more control. And that's a tight spot. Yes, it is. Very tight spot. This property is actually bigger than that property. Oh, yeah. And we yeah. have a gas station on it, too. Yeah. So, as I understand it at this point, you're asking for additional landscaping along the front of the building, mm -hmm. Elm Street side. Some enhanced lighting, I guess you would And then call additional it. lighting yeah. along the, the front Elm Street side of the building. Yeah, and like uh, some cans, uh, indirect, yeah. or whatever you'd call it. Yeah. Yeah, I think that'll dress it up. I mean, it might kind of make it look more. Yep. I think it would look. I think it would look more like the McDonald's and Denny, and you know. And I, I think we're also re requesting that we we revisit the the. I, I guess the, the coloration of you know the building system, so that it it has a little more contrast, and and we'll leave it up to staff and your architect to work something out that would be acceptable. You okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. I spent a lot of money with an architect for this design. Well, it's a big. Is it a big expense to change a color? I mean, I it's, you're not going to change material. We're not asking you to change material. We want, hmm? Okay. The, the landscaping right. at the front. This is a standard. This is like a standard building you know. for. Our oh, I see. It's like the McDonald's. It's, it's a building. Brand. Yeah. It's a branding thing. Yep. I got you. Yeah. So, yeah. I think you, I think when you see the building it's like that, the building that you're talking about, it's very similar to this. There's not a lot of color on it. This, this is the back. This stands out beautiful. Yeah. You could probably do a lot with the lighting. It's a nice building. Yeah. Right. It's a very right I think there the lighting is Elm, is Elm Street. Lighting and landscape along the yeah. lower edges below the window height would right. break up that lower level as mm -hmm. well. Well, I think it would look nice. The lighting you can do a lot with nowadays, especially with the LED. Yeah, right. Well, uh, we're going to leave it. We're not going to define what so the, the bushes are and what the lights no, are. No, I don't care what they do for bushes. And then we are we are flipping the building around, right? Yeah. As far as the, the, the way you have it worded. You know, if we make a condition of approval, we don't. No. Yeah. We have to make. No. What it is right now. No. Clear. Clear. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But we will. Okay. All right. Okay. <coughs> Those two minds together, man, I'm telling you. I, I wish they were doing it on the record. Yeah, uh, port of order. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take I'll take your word. <laughs> we do disagree, but you're a straight up guy. I'll give you that. <laughs> so No, we were just waiting for you guys. All right. Um with uh, error on the drawings, we don't want to tie you guys up, okay? I, I think it's leaning favorable. Mm -hmm. There are a couple conditions that you've heard. Instead of the color scheme of the building, which you could consider doing that anyways, but we're not going to make that a condition. The condition would be seven recessed cans in your soffit in between each window shining down on seven bushes of your choosing, unless you've got a particular bush. How about tomatoes? <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so basically, you know, it'll be between every window, shining down on a nice bush there. It'll yeah. keep the building illuminated at night. It's gonna be new because everything along Elm Street is lit up all night. Right. right. And if we don't light this up, Commissioner Petronella is 100% right. It's it's going to be a black hole. So I think that would look sharp. It's very minimal cost. Um, what did you want to? I want my color. You want your color. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't. We can't demand they change colors. No, no. We'll say that they they work it out with with it's a branding. It's a branding color. They just change yeah. color. All right. With consideration of possibly coloring the peaks or something, you see, okay. Yep. Um, and then what was the other one? Oh, that, that's it. Just that those three. That. You guys are good with them? Yep. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, if you're good with them, I think everybody, you good? Okay. So I'll entertain a motion. This Mr. isn't. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion for the approval of Site Plan Review 1872. Um, the resolution as prepared by the, the planning staff dated October 28th, 2021, with the 20 
conditions as indicated in, in the res resolution, plus three additional site-specific resolution uh, conditions that we, we've discussed. The first one is that there, there be some consideration to providing some additional contrast to the exterior lighting or, or color scheme so that it, it, it's a little more defined. The second condition is that landscaping is provided at the front of the building. And a third consideration is that additional accent lighting is provided at the front of the building. Seven cans, seven yeah, bushes. Seven, bush. seven cans and seven bushes. Yep, right. because it's going to lay out one, two, three, four. So basically, it'll be between every Windows. one of your windows with a nice light shining down on it. Right. Huh? And, and I'll mend that. Right, on the end. With seven and seven. I mean, it'll look sharp, seven. you know, and draw attention to you. Is there a second? Motions made and seconded by Commissioner Grillo. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? It's unanimous. Thank you. Welcome to Enfield. Thank you, you gentlemen. Appreciate it. Thank you. I'll see you again soon, I suppose. <laughs> when are you guys looking to open up? Uh, probably late summer. Late. Triple A is going to be there until March, April. Oh, all right. All right, good night. Good night, Thank Carl. You. What's that? Well, the way it's been raining and that building's been underwater, it's never going to happen. They should start doing working on boats. Really? We just had two buildings brought to us with nothing. Not even a picture of the building. That is the town. All right. Are we ready? Oh, yeah. I got a bus. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can we bring it in? Thank you, gentlemen. Old business. Seeing none. New, other business. Seeing none, correspondence, seeing none, commissioner's correspondence, seeing none, uh, director of development services report. Mr. Chairman, could we um, change the order from 16 A and B and just have the discussion on farm breweries and wine, wineries first, since we have the uh, potential applicant in the audience. Sure. What is that parking opt out by town? That's the public act 21. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, that's gonna so, be nobody, they, Do they we have to make a motion to move A and B? Yeah. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we reverse the, the I guess items of discussion on the Director of Development Services report and make item B A and item A B. Second. Motion pain seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Anybody here who would like to speak uh, in regards to the Draft Farm Brewery? Charles, come on up. Yeah. So, Mr. Chairman, um, you know, uh, Mr. Master Brody has uh, been requesting this come about uh, for some time now, probably over a year, I'd say. Over um, <laughs> the staff did some uh, background research, and I kind of went through most of it and kind of pulled out um, a good regulation that I thought actually from Ellington and just modified it for Enfield. So um, I did provide that for you th this evening. Um, it, I don't know whether you've read through it or not. Or I have. So, uh, so what I did is um, Lori has been heading this uh, at the request of Mr. Master Birdie to get something approved in Enfield. She's done a lot of work on it. She's come up with a bunch of different things. And he is the actual farm that is requesting this. So I told her maybe we should invite him too 
because this is kind of an open discussion for a new regulation in town and he knows what his vision is and we don't and i think lori's got a good idea but if we're all in the same room we put together a good plan and go forward all right so we'll start with you have you read the regulation yes i have and tell uh, us what charlie master brody 54 weymouth road enfield so everything looks um really good to me it's just number eight under sign standards um, we've got farm stands listed farm stands attached but this would be considered i believe a farm store so i i would just like to get that added along with the signage but everything else i'm looking at in here looks just what we're looking for So, so actually, what I did there was um, I kind of, if if you look at my my key up front, up on the top, the red items are to be discussed because I thought we should have the conversation. Um, so I just gave you the sign standards that we had currently. So for farm stands, we allow 20 square feet per side with two permitted along the frontage. A farm stand attached signs could be two feet per linear feet linear foot of a building not to exceed 32 square feet so um i that was just for your guidance as to how you felt you wanted to move on this so if you consider this a farm store i i, I would probably go with a 32 square feet so you're talking about a wall sign correct uh, no, street sign. A street sign. Or entrance so. sign. So the farm stands uh, allow the attached signage, but we don't necessarily allow um, the street signage. Not at 32 square feet, though. No, I, so. I agree. So I don't know what the commission thinks along the, those yeah. lines. So, so, it so really this, doesn't this, matter. So, so, so this would be part of the. I, I guess you're 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 indicating that you want to put a farm store, so that I, I, I'm envisioning like a freestanding building that you would have merchandise that you're going to be selling, and would that you know I, I guess should we start discussing in terms of setbacks for you know secondary or supplementary because is this going to be a residence too where you're going to no. have your house oh no no this is strictly an accessory farm building i, I guess you would so call so it. basically it's going to be a standalone parcel of land that will right. have a, a building on it yes. with no residential structures or, or it could have residential structure or is it no. just so there's no residential structure correct right now we do have an existing farm we did just put up a new farm building um and right now we sell honey firewood things like that um and you know one of the caveats of this is we would like to employ special needs children just to you know s serve the beer um so right this would be a standalone building but under the current regulations for the state i i believe they call it a farm store is the building itself the barn you would use to to uh, brew your beer okay <laughs> am i answering that right well yeah i yes i guess so so basically this is not supplemental to to, to the, another use for that piece of land other than the fact that you will be it will be a farm and, and you will be either growing your own hops or you'll be growing your own you know vines and and creating your own brews depending on which material <coughs> you're using or which vegetable or herb or whatever you exactly. want to call it. In the state regs, it states already what percentage you need, not necessarily to be grown on your farm, but grown within the state of Connecticut. And we would certainly adhere to those okay. regulations. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, I have a comment. Um, this board in the past has been reluctant to regulate any business hours. So there is hours of operation here. I don't know if that's something the state requires, um, but I know in the past we have not regulated operating hours for any business. I, I just number nine, I'm calling out. 
I think the only reason that um, towns might do that is because a lot of these are actually in residential zones. So, um, but it's certainly up to, you know, the commission to make that decision. I'm just raising that because in the past it's been, we've been consistent on not regulating hours of operation. Should we, should we be going through these, the, the red highlighted areas so that we, we actually address, you know, the yeah. areas of concern or the areas that, that have some variability to them? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, start with one. Permitted uses via special permit would include tastings towards retail and wholesale sales. I don't, do you want me to read this all or? I will. All right. I will. Um, Wholesale sales of products grown or manufactured on the premises, sale of merchandise related to the products grown or manufactured on the premises, or sale of merchandise unrelated to the products grown or manufactured on the premises when unrelated merchandise is no more than 40% of the of all merchandise for sale. So this was taken from Ellington, and I, I really don't have a strong opinion one way or the other, whether it should be 40% or 50% or... Why would we limit? Well, because, right. Why would because we I limit? think that, you know, I think that it's, it's, it's not the primary purpose is no, to I have understand. like a but retail wanted, sales. I, I mean, think of, you know, all the, the hemp clothing that's being grown and people are wearing now mm -hmm. i mean a farm next door grows him and he wants to you know somebody comes in and tries one of his smutty nose beers and there's a couple sweaters or different shirts they could buy you know maybe he puts his logo on one of them but he didn't necessarily grow the hemp on his farm right. or you have alpacas or llamas or llamas llamas the wool from the llamas you know it just you could right, do but that would so be related much. I think the point is is that you, if you, you don't want um, this to turn into a retail sales of just anything. Unrelated to products or manufactured on the premises when unrelated merchandise is no Don't more. we allow on other uses like this, other farm materials to be brought to the location exactly like what you're saying well farm stands sell everybody's produce right so it's saying 40 percent has to be produced on his farm no no any farm no he can't sell any more than 40 percent of other farms products so if he specializes in tomatoes okay he can't sell squash and zucchini and this. He can only do 40% of what he sells in tomatoes in the rest. By value. Well, why do we want to regulate that either? That's what I mean. I, well, why, I, I don't, I'm don't. i okay with not regulating. Why would we want to regulate that? It's like the hours of operation. It's the almost the same thing. can only sell so many dozen donuts. Let the market decide that. Right. I agree. So you want to just take that out? Yeah, that makes no sense. Yeah. Our, our <laughs> consensus? Yeah. I, guys all right sell. consensus to remove that i mean every brewery you walk into they sell hats they sell shirts they sell sweatshirts and you're gonna have honey you know you may have a bad year you got to buy it off another farm and i i just like this year it was a bad year <laughs> for honey production <laughs> okay um the next item is minimum lot size so um i put three contiguous acres just because that is our definition of a farm in this town. Um, other uh, towns have had a minimum of 10 acres, uh, uh, or I've, I've seen some even 20 acres. That's but um, Stay three. if you want to be consistent with our definition of farm, it would be three acres. I think that's good. Well, well, I'm concerned with the three acres for a brewery, not a farm, because if you're going to have a brewery, now you need the building, you need the structure they live in, you also need parking for the brewery. I mean, are you going to pull that off on three acres? Remember, a farm has to be 100 feet off the road, the barns. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you're really trying to squeeze a lot into three acres. I'd be okay, you know, five or more. But we're calling this, we're calling this a, well, it could be more. 
but we're calling this a draft farm brewery regular. right but what i'm saying is there's houses throughout enfield bellawood where i used to live mm -hmm. that's three and a half acres he could legally put a brewery in that neighborhood where he doesn't have he's saying. got tiny but they frontage. have to prove that they can huh they they will have to prove that they can supply the parking and the setbacks you could still do it i mean i don't think a lot a lot of these little breweries are, I, I understand are, you can do it but do you want that in a residential <laughs> neighborhood okay when you start getting five and more acres you're not finding them in residential neighborhoods I thought it was five acres to begin with. no it's no, three. three i have a three acre farm behind my house yeah, that's a three. It's right. three. Now. I want to, for a brewery, it should be you know at least five acres, you know, to maintain the farm because by the time you put the brewery up, the house up, the parking lot up, where are you going to grow anything? Well, I, I, I just don't I was, see it. I was just thinking it was good to, for the language to stay consistent with three acre farms, but if you guys the consensus is to move it up, I'm good with that. I just thought it would be easier to remember and to to uh, facilitate. Yeah, that's fine. I, I just thought it was, you know, easier on everybody could, right. you know, the, the number three, but everybody good, good with five? Five? Is three acres. Yeah, and for the small, the, the, the three acre farm. But you, how many acres you have, Nelson? Just shy of three. I'm going to put a brewery down there. <laughs> now that I know I can, I'm putting a brewery there. No, no more. It's five. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you want to, then we won't change it. The town property too. How about that? So you want to change three to five? Yep. Please. Mm -hmm. Three to five. Um, setback requirements. The town is 100 feet for any barn. Outdoor activities such as outdoor seating and tasting shall be located a minimum of 200 feet. No, I think it should remain 100 because why are you going to make them go drink 100 feet behind where the beer is made? They can't even sit inside the barn and have a beer. I agree. So just eliminate that. You, you good with that, Lori? Mm-hmm. Just make it a hundred. Yeah. A hundred feet, Charlie. Yeah. I agree with a hundred for sure. Like you said, the building only has to be a hundred feet setback. So, if you have your tap room there, you're ready. Go get your the beer, rest. walk through the parking yeah, lot, and then go drink it. <laughs> what they? about you, Carl? You good with that? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Parking and assessor access requirements, 15 spaces per 1,000. You're okay with that? That meets, you'll be good with that? I'd be good with that. You guys, any, I mean, I could go either way. I don't care. Yeah, yeah and, and how, the parking how big are we was all over the place. For the, spaces per. For, how big is your place that, you're, that you have over there? Like how many people can be in there drinking and... Okay, the, the tap room itself is going to be small, like only 400 mostly, square feet. I'm going to show up, grab something, and, and leave. And sit outside. No, oh, we're going to. Oh, you can sit outside. Correct. Oh, okay. Okay. So you don't want to walk another right. feet away. No, it doesn't make any sense. Like, I want to get my beer, go to the like, picnic tables, and hang out with a group of friends. Right. If you're familiar with, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the name of the brewery on Route 10 in Granby, it's a farm brewery. I've and, heard of it. And that's just what they have is, you know, 90% outside seating. Well, I know a guy right now doing a brewery in Tolland uh, Industrial Park. He, he has a upholstery business, and he's in the process of approving a brewery in the industrial park. So that I'm like, okay. Be a farm one. <laughs> right, but these are two different. <laughs> right, right, I get it. Charlie, uh, is this, still, is this where the new barns were just built? The, Correct. The, the beautiful barns there? Yes. That's, okay, that's your place? Okay. Oh, that's right. No, he's next door. He's not the big, big I'm not barn. the big steel barn. That's, that's Grosick next okay. door to me, yeah. Grosick. So you're from going down Weymouth, there's that house with the new barn? Yes. That's, that's you. Yeah. That's, that's me. That's you, right. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, that's nice. Refuge area, good, good, good. Sign standards. Current regulations are farm stands, 20 square feet per side with two permitted along frontage, farm stands attached. Everybody good with that? Mm -hmm. yeah, there was some question about whether there could be allowance for a standing sign by the roadside. That, hey, Joe's Brewery. Yeah, no matter how small, just something. Well, he can have the farm sign. I mean, that says Smutty Nose Farm. 
Doesn't even. That's the name. That's the name, right? Muddy. No, no. Muddy oh. nose. Muddy Foot Farm. Why am muddy I Foot. It's muddy. Is that's there not going to be the name of the brewery. That's the name of the farm right now. Oh, so we can go there and buy honey now. Brewery. No, no, we're still bambying around names. Okay, that but, changes. But the farm right now is Muddy Foot Farm. Muddy Foot. <laughs> can we go? You can go there and buy honey now. You sell stuff now, or yes. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. that's good to know. Okay. <laughs> I just want to go back, Mr. Chair, to number three item: the setback requirement. Or given the setback requirements, I think. The question I would have would be between actual equipment to make the beer, the storage of your material, and then how many people you really want to serve, what would be your ideal square footage for a building? With that, what I'm asking or saying is, would it fit in an envelope that's five acres minus 100 feet setbacks, and would it still be enough or is it too little, or is it too much? Oh, no, I think it'd be just right. Like, like I said, if you, if you look at the, the farm brewery in Granby right now, they're in about the same size building we are. Um, we've already looked into brewing equipment, and we found a nice, compact, completely enclosed system that I won't need venting for and things like that. So I, I, I think it'd be ideal. The building right now is 800 square feet. And that's good for you as yes. far as making and processing, storing, and everything? Correct. Okay. And it's two floors. We have another, you know, 800 feet upstairs also. So Yeah, but the uh, we heavy have, freezers. Use, we could. <laughs> yeah, the heavy coolers, you're not going to put on the second floor. You're going to no, put it on no, the first floor. certainly not. That would yeah. just be seating area. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thanks. All right, we're back to the signs. Yes. Is that big enough for you? Yes, All right, definitely. it's our regulation, so we don't change that. Hours of operation, like Commissioner Alimo said, I don't want to limit anybody. I mean, we get into the, he's doing hay rides and stuff like that, or his intent in the future, who knows what's going to happen. But, you know, Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas, Ooh. you know, I don't want to limit him to days or hours of operation. No, because the only thing I'm thinking about is that, you know, could if he wants to be open as late as a bar, let's say if it's I don't know what time they close, two o'clock, one o'clock, you know, could, do we allow him to be open that late in, in, in a residential or in a, in a farm community type of thing? You know, so so I think that you know if we we should put an upper, upper limit as to how late he can stay open and and you know obviously in the summer when it's light till nine o'clock you know right. you, you don't want to close at eight you know you you want to stay open till at least maybe ten correct and, and most farm breweries do have limited hours right and and, and, and I have no right. these hours you're looking at right here. I honestly don't want to be down there past nine o'clock. So right. I, I, I believe you should so follow. About when you're doing hay rides, well, that's a, and it's eleven o'clock at night. You got correct. a line of people who are wanting to go. You're not going to shut the bar down from serving them drinks. The one right. in, at Penny Farms, I've been there at past midnight because there were so many people there, and they were they wouldn't allow any more in, but they were just trying to service the people that were there. And it's going to be rare on the occasion this might happen, but you know he's got to if he's got a hundred people and I think it should be relative. Slow, I think it should be relative to the state liquor permit where they allow you to operate. Right, right. The it, is the it's by, by the state. By two One is the market demand. The second is the state. Exactly. Right. Right. It should be, it shouldn't be us. Right. I, I mean, we're lucky because we're on 30 acres and we, we don't really have any neighbors no. other than a farm to one side. Right. Yeah, and then there's a land easement, I believe, on the other. Yeah. So so nobody can like get. Like Chairman Nelson was saying, we're going to five acres. How many five acre farms are you going to find in a subdivision? You're, no. you're not. Exactly. So I mean, exactly. three acres, you might. But I, I say. We're, we're stepping out of our boundary if we go and try to, you know, rewrite state statutes relative to anything. Well, we're not rewriting Well, anything. I mean, we're... I my, just, well, I think the hours of operation should be left up to the operator. Right. And it's he's, his farm. He can, right. you know, his daughter exactly. wants to stay and, out and there one night. You I know, agree. since we'd be adhering to, like, for example, outdoor entertainment, 
if we did have entertainment, it would strictly be um, acoustical. Acoustical, and that, that's it, not amplified like she's got on here. I, I have no problem with that. So, right, we want to be good to our neighbors, and we don't want to have noise complaints. Yeah. So mm. we'll always keep that in mind. Everybody good with removing the hours? Mm. Yes. Yeah, okay. Food truck, that's it. Lori? That's what I was going to say. <laughs> as soon as I get that permit, we're going. <laughs> so, at this point, I'll make the modifications, and we could send it to um, Krog for a review. Is that right? Yep. And um, we will probably have to have a public hearing. Thirty days, probably with in probably in December. We only have one meeting, so. I mean, okay. he's been he's been waiting a while for this. So if mm -hmm. we can, I'd even have a special meeting because we only have one meeting in December. Okay. Do we have to wait for the Krog process before yes. we do anything? Right. Yeah. Tax amendments. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Good luck, Charlie. Thank you. Yep. Smutty, where did I come up? With? Smutty nose. Is that a beer? Smutty nose. Smutty no. But I, I said smutty. All right. Um, Director of Development Services Report A P A twenty one dash twenty nine parking opt out by Town Council. Yep. Yep. Oh, back to this thing again? Oh, boy. We won't go through all of them. We won't go through all of these, but um, you did want to talk about the parking. So um, first page, well, it's actually three. Page three is ex the ADUs. We opted out, and so has the town council. So that's a done deal. <clears throat> the next page is multifamily housing. So these are statutes that we must abide by. So um, we are we are good with the fair fees for multifamily. We're good with the no numerical caps. We don't have anything like that. Um, the minimum unit size requirements. This act prohibits municipalities from establishing a minimum unit size that is that are larger than the minimum unit size established by building code. Our building code does not have any size established, so therefore we cannot limit the size at all. Can we opt out of that? No. There is no opt-out provision for this. Good boy. So, um, we're also supposed to um, provide for opportunities for housing, including multifamily, and to allow for housing that meets the needs outlined in the State Plan of Conservation and Development, um, which basically um, is fair, equitable, and diverse housing. So these are things that we, are, we will need to put into the Plan of Conservation and Development. Um, and then this is a new thing that the Municipal Authority Municipal affordable housing plans, we actually have to create an affordable housing plan by statute and and update it every five years. Doesn't Enfield have one? We have, um, you know, some wording, but it's vague, and this this is something that we will have to show that we're actually doing and utilizing and promoting. So I just wanted you to realize that. The big thing was the minimum unit size. So is that like right now? Yep. Yeah. Wow. As of October 1st. Uh, the next one is outdoor dining. The executive order is continued through March 31st of next year. Next is recreational cannabis. The town council basically voted to not have any in town. And then the next oh, one. How did they opt out? Yeah, the, that's um, something that uh, they did it by resolution. Right, but if they can opt out of bits and pieces of this, 
Well, because there is an opt-out provisional for the recreational cannabis. Oh, but not for the multifamily. No. Um, traffic and parking. So this was the this we can opt out. However, all this says is well, basically, um, it it go, lets um, the local municipality um, decide on what the speed limits are in town instead of OSTA doing it. So that's kind of nice. Um, and then also has will also uh, consider major traffic generators impact on bicycle and pedestrian accesses. And then the big thing is um, reduced parking requirements. This requires that zoning must not require parking in excess of one space per studio or one bedroom unit or two spaces for larger housing units unless a municipality opts out. So basically, um, you know, I don't really see a real problem with this. One space per studio, I mean, that we would we would require two. But for a studio apartment, I mean, realistically, only one person's living there. And same with the one bedroom unit. So, but it's up to you. Um, as a comparison, so our multifamily dwelling units are two per unit. Single family is two dwelling units, or two per dwelling unit. So when they say two spaces for larger housing units, I think they're talking about, you know, like these McMansions that, you know, you might you have like 10 bedrooms. Some uh, municipalities will base their parking uh, on the number of bedrooms as opposed to the dwelling unit itself. So they're just saying that you can't have more than two per house, essentially. More than two park, wait a minute. More than two parking spaces per house? Yeah. No, we can't, can't more than? we can't require more. Oh, oh okay. They could have more, okay, but we gotcha, can't require gotcha. more. But if it's a four family home. So that's two spaces per dwelling unit. It's based on the dwelling unit. Per so unit. unit. Yeah. Not house. Right. Okay. So if you go back to, I believe that's true. I, I might have to oh, double okay. check that that larger housing unit. So Lori, well, we back up to the square footage. So if somebody puts in a whole bunch of two hundred square foot apartments, well, how would they park everything? How how would you have parking? Because that you would could be have one per studio apartment, and you got to have one spot per unit. But that regulation says we can't even control a minimum square foot apartment. Right. Okay. Well, they can make it one hundred square foot. But it'd be an efficiency. You're not going to get a two-bedroom apartment in 100 square feet. So it'd be one car. I, I, the way this thing's written, I don't even know if we have any control over that. This is, I don't know. I'm okay with the parking so far. So as I said, um, just comparisons. Uh, we have two, two per d dwelling unit for multifamily, single family, and assisted living, and then um, Continuing care, we have one per two beds. Convalescent homes, one per three beds. I mean, so it really just starts dropping down when you get into the senior and uh, medical housing. But I, I don't see any reason that we couldn't have one space per studio or one bedroom apartment. I think that's only reasonable. Difference. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's worth going through the aggravation. I, th I think out. it's actually a smart. Uh, you know, a, a you smart think? number for these uses. Yeah. Do we ever regulate whether we provide additional spaces for visitors? You know, not only, you know, as, you know, determining if they have 10 units that they have to have two or three visitor sp spaces. So that would provide additional parking for those one bedroom units if they yeah. had two, you know, cars yeah. there. And and we can get around, you know, this requirement because m my, my son lives in, in a condominium complex and whenever we go to visit him, you know, you're always looking for a space and, and you can't grab somebody else's unit, you know, some other unit spaces. You, you always have to try to find one that's a visitor. And if you don't have a visitor space, Space, then you know you're sort of you know you, you try to grab somebody else's space and then you hopefully they don't you know come knocking on the door and says hey you're in my space so no, you know yeah. may possibly that you know one way around this is that although we, we limit you know one 
car, one parking space per one unit bedroom or efficiency, we, we throw in a caveat that for every four or five units, you have to provide, you know, one or two, you know, visitor spaces. And that provides all the, you know, the additional spacing that Mr. might be required. Mr. you're looking for parking right in front of his unit. You gotta walk a mile away, park there, and then walk back. But, but there's, the, the, but his, <laughs> he only has like eight units, and, and, and it's either there's one visitor parking spot, and if you don't get it, you're, you're S, you, you don't have one spot. That's the problem, problem is. We have, I think it works, it's just that you gotta park far enough away and then walk all the way back in the snow and the ice and the rain, and that's why we complain. The two-bedroom condo, somebody has three cars, and they park the third car in the visitor spot, and yeah. that's why they have no more visitor spots. I know exactly. I, I, I think so that... I, I don't think that we have the provision currently. We, we might have some visitor um, parking requirements within the condos, but like within just multifamily complex, no. But but we can add them for a multifamily complex. If, if as, as a deterrent to not we, have we any, because everybody has visitors in terms of, you know, if, if you're living in, in you know, a, a multifamily unit or a multi, you know, you know, park, you know, any kind of multi-unit building that some you always have a you know visit you know your your mother comes to visit you your, your brother comes to visit yeah. you you know no i i understand and, what you're and, saying you know, so it, I, we we certainly could add <laughs> that into our multifamily regulations or condos or whatever we just can't require more than two spaces I, I, I think that if, if we're smart, we can get around that. You know, I think that what we need but to do is... There might be a way to do just, it. Just, 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 we have to get creative with... On with, a bigger complex. On, on bigger complexes, so that, yeah. you know, there is some additional spaces just for those people who have yeah. visitors. Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, no, the only, thing that I, the only thing that I was thinking of is now if you're trying to add visitor parking, now you're... you're Right now, you are requiring more parking. So, if you say you have all a uh, bunch of one-bedroom condos, but now you are requiring extra spaces, they may not be per dwelling unit, but now you are kind of around the way requiring more spaces per dwelling unit, just calling them visitor spaces. Well, we're not requiring it for the unit; we're requiring it for, for the, the employees for and the, the maintenance complex. workers. Yeah, right for, for, the, for the, complex. the complex. In terms of you know, it, it yeah. like you said, you you cannot only have. You know, it, and, and again, if you had, if you, it's like par everybody start parking in the street, and, and is is that what we're trying to achieve? Is is that everybody, you know, we, we get a significant amount of street parking, and I think that that's what we're trying to, I guess, go, you know, beyond that point where there is some place that that's protected that people can park in yeah. residential zones that aren't necessarily in the street. I, I think it would have to be very creative, and as Ben said, we're basically, you're basically still asking for more parking spaces based on a development of dwelling units. So, it. Do I, don't, have, I don't have a definitive answer, but quite. I, honestly, I mean, but the thing is, so we're not, we're, we're, we're not really, call, we're not really into, calling it parking spaces for the units. We're saying it's parking spaces for visitors. Yeah. So, so. Fine line. <laughs> Are there, is there anything else that we need to opt out of? I or, think this is the only thing that we have the option of opting out. Okay. Because what I was going to so. say, if there was something else that we got to opt out of, then we could put nope. this right on it and go, Trust. and then you're protected, Rich. But I don't know if it's worth getting the town council involved and everything over, because I do agree we may so be a similar to opt out, similar to ADU. So probably the same process. It is, it is the exactly same process. the same process. Yeah. You would have to opt and, out and as well as town the town council, council coming in in a week. You know, they got a lot on their plate trying to get up to speed. I just, to me, it's not well, the fight I want to fight, but yeah, yeah. I think we can do. Yeah, I think we like should look at yeah. I think we should look into that. Definitely. All right. All right. I, I, I mean, we'll look into it. I, I just. You're okay with not opting out of that, right, Lori? Yeah, I am. Yeah. Right. I'm actually in favor of not opting out. Can we opt out of this commissioner training? You cannot. Yeah. Oh. You, you overheard me saying that. According, <laughs> according to the so town on page council, 13. <laughs> according to the town council arguments, they were saying that you know we're opting out of our retraining, which the things that were being thrown around were, yeah, 
this this doesn't have an opt out provision and it does require right. by that January 1 2024 by, by January 1st 2023 next month. all commissioners <laughs> must complete initial training and complete additional training every two years thereafter and so basically the overall the training requirements are four hours of training uh, which must include at least one hour concerning affordable and fair housing policies so now they are trying to create I think that I can't remember what organization it was. Maybe Desegregate Connecticut, but um, one of the organizations has already put out some um, possible training that's uh, virtual. I'll have to find that again. Yeah, if, if I might jump in. Yeah, uh, the uh, CT Bar Association does a training every two years, and it's they did it they did it last year or yeah this this past year 2021, and it was all virtual. It was a Saturday morning. Uh, I mean, I know nobody wants to spend their Saturday mornings talking land use law, but it was, yeah, it ran all, yeah, okay, who am I kidding, it ran all day. But it was, uh, it was pretty informative. Um, you know, it's one Saturday, and if it lasts you two years. Um, well, that's, I was going to say the same thing. I have to do continuing education every two years, and I just did four hours on fair housing and a fair and affordable housing. So I met my requirement under this regulation yeah this is like eight hours of training and well, this for the whole we thing have to do four hours of training but at least one hour of fair housing well uh, me doing four hours of fair housing covers my four hour requirement yeah i mean i, I know they i know uh at What's least that? one at least one attorney presented and covered uh affordable housing at that and i mean i'm not sure if the snepa one today would have counted for that training as well well they they can't go to snepa yeah but there there are other um groups out there so uh the, who pays for this well that's that's what i was about to say is the the uh, training that i saw is free and they're they're trying to create some free training otherwise we're going to have to budget for everybody to go to the wesleyan or you know the ct bar thing or um, some other training or have pay for somebody to come in and train the commissions because I mean I can piggyback mine so I know I'm good yeah no I think digital video type thing that you could the town can buy if they have to and I, we all know, take turns or groups and I, I don't think that it's really been worked out yet of course I mean not. nothing they yeah do I mean you know <laughs> there's there it, it's still a moving target they're they're trying to figure out where the training's coming so from and who's giving it and is it going to cost money and how accessible is it so okay but Ben is right that is an excellent training opportunity at the CT Bar Association but that is only every two years so was it was it that CT Bar was it that training uh, just we offered just, that we, we were on uh, earlier this year it, it yeah. was an all day Saturday thing yeah for like eight hours yeah which which I participated in and yeah and you get the, the book that's like an inch thick. yeah yeah that, that, and, and that 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 went fine it, and, and it was virtual which I thought was great yeah I, I it usually it is not virtual usually you go down to Wesleyan and yeah. and you get really good sandwich and you know sure. box lunches and yeah for 150 bucks <laughs> you get to mingle with people and talk about planning <laughs> just what you want to do on a Saturday, right? <sighs> so anyway, it's just, I mean, it, it basically, though, though it's a moving target, it is a done deal and it will be required of all. There's nothing we can do about it. We can opt out. So whatever comes, comes. You, you can opt yep. out of that, just like you can't opt out of the aqua protection regulations. I'm going to send you my certificate of completion that I just did last week. So you can use that. He didn't quite catch that, did he? All right, moving on. Did you hear what I just said? Huh? <laughs> the aquifer protection, you can't opt out of either. That's a nightmare. Oh, not that's, a, that's a nightmare, that aquifer right. protection it, thing. It, it that's is, not it good. It is a statute, and we have to follow it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Moving. Now, Chair, on the subject of training, after the commission meeting is over, I want training of my name for all commissioners. <laughs> I think that's hey, a I great got idea, well, Karan. Not me, Karan. I got, not me. Yeah, you I, 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 don't you have a normal name? Most people. It is a normal name. Those names, they have another Machinger. name like Jack. Jesus. Just call me Jack. Kieran Machinger. Just Jack. Karen Machinger. Yeah. 
All right, moving on. Administrative approval <laughs> reports, <laughs> SPR 1874. Um, it was just ADA improvements, and, and you all decided to have that as administrative approval at the last meeting. So. Oh, we um, did? Yep. So just what was 75 fresh water, please? Uh, Costco. Okay. Okay, applications to be received. I see none. Yeah. I was in I was in training all day and I didn't get an update as okay. to whether we no got problem. any new applications in, but let me uh, see if I can. I see so if there's there's a plant there's a warning sign up on those on the people who came in for the Elm Street gas station. That's why I said um, because convenience store. I seen a sign up there so isn't there a certain amount of time the sign has to be up and come down or something like that? Isn't there? Remember. For public hearings? Yeah, there's a public hearing sign on that parcel. They were here before us um, about the gas station. Oh, because, um, oh. they, yeah, yeah I think that that's what I was just going to look Yeah, because up. there's a sign up, um, so we have sign requirements for April, postings, don't we? A fresh one. Oh, so yep. they probably corrected that. Yeah, so. Sweet yeah. Scorpion. Okay. Wait, can she check it on something? Because we have a I, sign. I'm up. just seeing if. Um, Where? That, that gas station, those people that yeah, came in. Yeah, 190 ago? Elm Street, Noble Gas, SPR 1875. It's um, currently a sign. On there. the 26th. They were just in front of um, us. The sign's still up. So they haven't taken it down yet. Now she's looking at it. Continue. I mean, she was in the middle of looking at something. I'm sorry. So I'm just looking to see what new applications we have. Um. I think that's it. Is, is that sign currently there for an upcoming application, or is it an old sign? Uh, I assume it's up there for the this application. I, I don't know. Which application? Are, there's no applications coming. I just said 1875, 190 Elm Street. Oh my She's God. talking about a sign. No, no, I'm asking her a question. You keep buttoning in. So what is it? What are you it? talking about? Public yeah, hearing sign? Yes, yeah, a public no, hearing okay. sign. Okay. Um, I, the, right. I, I don't know because it's not a I I don't know what the sign is why okay. it's there. It's there. Okay. Okay. Thank you. No, no, thank you. It's there. Maybe it's left there from last time they were here, but uh, they never they, had a public hearing. They did have a public hearing, and they probably just left it there. Okay. So and you know they'll come they'll bring it back when they do, and we'll get they'll get their deposit back, and yeah, I don't see any other um, new applications here. So you don't remember the public hearing? I do. The sign is still up. You yeah. just said to her they didn't have a public hearing, and she said yes, they did. They did. Right. I know right. they did. But that was yeah. what two weeks ago. For his own change. Right. But that's why we're trying to explain to you. That's why the sign's there. But the sign should come down if there's no pending hearing. It will come down. I, I don't understand what the big deal is. Because Frank. there's sign. Doesn't there sign requirements when they go up and when they come down? Yes, they're oh supposed to God. be down within a couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you. It's misleading. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. You're not sure why the sign's there. Right. And I'm not sure. So, and this isn't a public hearing because it's, we changed the zone, so. No, 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 no. There's a period of time when the sign's got to go up and then come down. Right, so if people are driving by, they see a sign, a warning. It's for a public warning. I didn't get my question answered, but that's okay. No, we'll keep going. I'm just wondering. We've got all night. Wait for an every answer. meeting. Every meeting, Frank. I'm waiting Go for an ahead. Answer. Continue. We'll all wait. No, she. Well, she doesn't is. have an answer for you. She said that ten times. There is nothing pending right now for it. Right. She's not sure if it's an old sign. It must be because they were in front of us two weeks ago. Right. Ten so, other commissioners are assuming it's from the last zoning. Okay. And there is and, no requirement right. that it has to come yes, down. Yes, there is. Public hearing signs go up and come down. They go up and come Two down. Two weeks before whatever. Well, it's misleading and people are asking questions, so thank you. Right. Everybody drives, people drive by it and they're wondering what's going on. All set? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Opportunities on resolved issues, any? Motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Commissioner Grillo. Second. Second. 
By Commissioner Suzak, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions, it's unanimous. Remember, everybody take home your...